Oh, what's up? It's, uh, oh, how about that? That was some doom metal for you up in this piece or something like that. Uh, what do you call that? Nice little composition by uh, Aaron Farinelli uh, taking a variation on the uh, theme song of ours. Pretty, pretty scary. I found it. Sp- it was a little overbearing, to be honest. I was listening to it on my phone and it was like, it sounded mean, you know? <laughs> I felt like if I put on a podcast and that was the first thing I heard, I was like, this might be too hardcore for me, man. Yeah, well, we are pretty hardcore, so I mean, you know, it's. It, I think it was appropriate. But We're covering yeah. the hardcorest of all franchises this week, Paranormal Activity. Welcome. I'm the uh, the mini DV train and, uh, you know, Daniel Scarenberg for, for nice. my homies. And uh, over there is uh, Henry Papali on the uh, threes and the fours. Paranormal activity over here, and uh, it's good. We have a we have a very special guest. He's uh, the guest we've had on the most. Um, he hasn't been on. I checked uh, right before the show. Uh, he hasn't been on since April of 2020. And is that uh, the last time we had a guest? <laughs> no, we've had we've had a few since. Not that many, but um, right in the dead of Corona. And uh, that was for Children of the Corn 3 and 4. Holy shit. Yeah, right. Well, the Children of the Corn franchise, I feel like we were just, we needed anything to, like, wake yeah. us up in the morning. So we got yeah, some guests it was, in. Yeah, it was all, it was an awful experience all around. So, so here he is, everybody, our great friend, off and on air, Aaron Farinelli. Good evening, or something spooky equally how's it going everyone oh i thought uh, you were I doing you... an accent at first like a transylvanian accent i was gonna do uh, the, the adams family guy the good evening but or would Lurch. that be more of yeah yeah but uh nah, not quite doing it i'm 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 flying hot right out of the gate how's it going? <laughs> <laughs> hey uh, join the club yeah yeah double a aaron farinelli uh, of uh, Whale Fall, among other music projects, and uh, and drumming. Aaron Farinelli of drumming fame. Yeah, I just right. watched that thing you do last night uh, for the first time in a long time, and I remembered that I taught myself to drum to the soundtrack of that movie. Oh, hell yeah. How about that? I loved that movie when I was a kid. Yeah, did you wear sunglasses while you drummed like that guy? I think I tried that a couple times, and then it just took one person to say, like, what are you doing? And then, It's hard uh, to see, of... you know? You might, you're going to hit a lot of rims of drums, you know? That's right. Yeah. Not him. He can, he drums blindfolded, man. That's true. We, we Back in the Lord Awesome days, we used to have a gimmick where we did uh, one of the songs where we, I uh, wore a uh, blindfold, and Henry and, and me traded off solos. It was a wild time. I remember that. You did that in front of me once. Uh, and you used to jump out into the audience and play the drums upon the walls of the clubs. That yeah. was with this other band. Oh, that was the Grand March, yeah. That was with uh, Jason uh, Harris's group. Yeah, that was uh, Aaron's that together. superior band. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, was, Henry. For the, for the snobbier people, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah. No, they were great. They played their first show uh, with us. Uh, yeah, and your band didn't the, even have a fucking clarinetist, you lazy piece of shit. That's a good point. Yeah, at the Delancey. Remember, Aaron, we got ripped off by the bouncer. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We got ripped off hard, and we yeah. tried to confront him afterwards, and he just bailed. You want to get, get him fired on this pod right now? What was the bouncer sure. at the Delancey's name? Yeah, well, I don't know if he's still there. It was in I don't know if the Delancey is open anymore. Who knows, man? That was a good gig, though. We uh, we played. You played. Aaron, listen to this, Dan. He played both. Obviously, both fucking shows back to back. I mean, this fucking guy was just drenched in <laughs> sweat and adrenaline. It was crazy. The it, the endurance. That Aaron, he had. do you think Dave Grohl could do that? If in some strange twist of fate, the Foo Fighters somehow managed to open for Nirvana. <laughs> I, I got a sneaking suspicion he could probably pull that off. Well, listen to him giving props to Dave Grohl, respecting your elders. I like to hear it. All right, uh, 
Boy, Dave Grohl, what's going on with that guy? Yeah, I wouldn't <laughs> really. I'm not interested. <laughs> All right, Paris. I heard from him was like uh, he's involved with that new lawsuit from the kid who was uh, the baby on the cover. They're making a new cover. They're going to do a new cover for Nevermind. This time they're going to make sure to get the baby to sign the contract before they shoot his dick. <laughs> ridiculous. Yeah. Oh, ridiculous. Ridiculous. They changed the title from the album to Nevermind to Nobody Gives a Fuck. <laughs> still powerful, uh, still great album. Yeah. Oh it, yeah. It, it, yeah. They had to cut out um, territorial pissings though, because that's offensive. Okay. <laughs> Henry, uh, Paramount Pictures. We're going to talk about today. They have a streaming service called Paramount Plus. I pay them eight bucks a month or something like that. Maybe ten bucks a month for. Oof. The Paramount Plus service. The reason I'm paying for it is I'm currently binge-watching the old seasons of Big Brother for the first time. Uh, <clears throat> but I own the Paramount Plus network, and uh, we're watching these Paranormal Activity films. These are Paramount films. They've got a new Paranormal Activity movie premiering on this service in two weeks. I ask you now... Why the fuck couldn't I watch these fucking movies on Paramount Plus? Oh, uh, so you couldn't? No. I paid for every one of them, so and I will continue. Four is on Hulu. Other than that, I think all the rest you got to buy. Are you That's fucking rent. kidding me, Paramount? You own That's the English. rights to all of these movies. You're releasing a new one in like 10 days, and you, you're not giving people the opportunity? You, fucking, this is why Disney runs the world. It's not a matter of a monopoly. It's that everyone else is fucking incompetent. Yeah. I can't believe that. You think they'd want to drum up a lot more hype for it, you know, get everyone stoked to go back and rewatch the previous films. The you just, yeah. you just can't shut up about the drums, Aaron. Every sentence has to involve drums in some way. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, they, they're trying to get the percussion ready and the, the, <laughs> the, the, the drum beats, the uh, percussive sound. You know, I got fucked on these two movies, bros. I I, oh. I, I rented the first. I first of all, I owned the first movie, but I was too, I didn't feel like finding it. It's way buried in my DVD collection. I didn't feel like digging in that in that trove. So I was like, I'll just watch it for three bucks. Fine. Second movie, I rent. A couple days before I'm going to watch it. Big deal, right? It's on Amazon. I rent it. I go to watch it last night. It says not purchased. I'm like, whoa. Uh, did you wait 24 what? hours? And it doesn't matter. You have 30 days to watch the movie. Not if you, if you not started it. Started. But maybe you did by accident just the first second of it. I don't think that happened. So I go back. I want to make sure I actually bought it. I checked my Amazon account. Purchased. Had to purchase receipt didn't feel like following through so i paid again three oh bucks my god oh, no what I am know. i gonna do wait, i know just, wait i mean they, they fuck you because they have no phone number so you, you, what are you gonna do so i paid uh, nine dollars to watch these two movies but that's okay because uh they were good quality <laughs> good quality uh screenings i have no I don't know. I read that Jeff Bezos just bought a house with 1,100 light fixtures in it. <laughs> Is that a lot of light fixtures? I don't know. I, it sounded like a lot. Yeah. <laughs> Over, <laughs> oh, like, they, it was like 1,000 light fixtures, and Bezos was like, no, 100 more. Yeah. Uh, All right. Well, at least he's got a place where he can get bulbs for cheap. Yeah. <laughs> Good point, yeah. You can always switch them out, right? If, you, right. if one ever goes out, you'll never run out. Just yeah. always know the least important bulb in the house. Yeah, and he has a website, I think, that where he can order them, so it'll work out for him. Yeah. I've got one light fixture in my house with two bulbs, and one <laughs> of the bulbs is out right now. <laughs> <laughs> nice. And you're you're surviving. Barely. Yeah, all right. Par let's talk about a guy who's surviving. Uh well, how about a guy who's not surviving? Mika Sloat. Uh-oh, uh-oh, yeah. uh-oh. R.I.P. to these fine actors. Um, 
Let, uh, so, Paranormal Activity, the first one. This was uh, a lightning rod when it came out, gang. Everybody had to have an opinion on this. What a hit it was. Came out of nowhere. I remember the trailers all had... It didn't even show shots from the movie. It was just shots of audience members in green camera, you know, night vision. And it was just them reacting to shit in the screen. Like, oh, I'm fucking freaked out. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I remember this movie because uh, somebody in our gang gate told me uh, to watch it on some fucking cheap ass illegal website, and it was the first thing I tried to watch. Uh, I might have been Matt or somebody like that gave me a address, so I watched this thing, and it fucked up my laptop big time. Uh, <laughs> totally virus laden, uh, and. But I did watch it, uh, and I was a bit drunk at the time, uh, so it didn't have quite the impact it could have. But the interesting thing is that I watched whatever they put on that illegal service was was the different ending than ended up in theaters. So when I saw it in theaters with a group of people, Dan, as wait, as you know, watched it, this it, in theaters after trying to watch it on an illegal site and not enjoying correct. it. Yeah, because you know, no, I did enjoy it. I enjoyed what I saw, but it was just it was the it was the aftertaste of basically having a virus in my computer that 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 left me sour. But it was like a group thing. A lot of people at the store were going to go see this fucking thing, and so I joined in and I saw it. And then when the end came, I was quite shocked because it was completely different mm -hmm. and uh, much better actually. Um, and then I had the DVD. I've seen the other end. It says fucking three endings of this fucking thing. But let's yeah. just suffice to say, yeah. we went with the right one here. I'll get into the back. Oh well, you know, some of the listeners wanted us to rank endings, so maybe you can do that because I sure, I, I read about the other two, but I've only seen the theater. Ending. Yeah, yeah, I watched all three of them as well, and um, oh, or not not all three versions, but I, I just looked up on YouTube the three different endings, and um, you know, I got some opinions, but we can we shouldn't get too far ahead of ourselves, I guess. Yeah, I, I didn't watch, I didn't rewatch the alternate endings, but I remember them and I reread about them. But um, I, I've seen them all, and my vote goes to the one they went with. But sure, anything for the viewers. Episode two hundred seventy nine. Welcome oh. everybody. God damn it! I thought I thought I got you at that. Never, you'll never get me. It's not for me. It's for Olivia, who's keeping it correct on. You the think Olivia's episode. just been on pins and needles for the first twelve minutes of this episode, going like, "When's he gonna say it?" No, I think she's given up because she doesn't want to deal with your. Bizarre I, I think she runs a website based on the show and can probably see what number the last episode was, and then just add one. Yeah, you know, but if it was more normal, we'd just be at 304, which is, like, kind of what we were at. But hey, shout out, it. Olivia. Thanks. You're doing a great job. I, I, <laughs> you've got amazing patience to deal with these two knuckleheads. <laughs> yeah, the sure. dot com. Yeah. All right. Let's, sure. let's talk about Oren Pelly, one of our finest Jews, um, a great Israeli member of the Brotherhood, one of the chosen people. And uh, he he financed this film with his Jew money, his great Jew wallet. And uh, God, I shouldn't. <laughs> if any, if I heard anybody else say what I'm saying right now, I'd be so offended. I know you would. Yeah, that's yeah, okay. Right. You know, hey. Sometimes I show. catch myself. All right, Oren Pelly. He uh, he put 15 grand of his own money into this movie. He wrote the script. He um, sort of bunged up a script, really. And uh, he bought like a an HD camera and he filmed this shit in his own house with uh, some people who he just put out a random casting call on the Internet for. Uh, yeah. Katie Featherton and Mika Sloat, who got paid five hundred dollars a piece to be in this movie. Um, he he. So he puts 15 grand into it. Then it premieres at a 2007 horror film festival. All right, the Scream Fest. It gets in. All right, it yeah. does. It, it gets a big reaction there. People are into it, uh, and somebody that's in the audience is an agent from CAA, one of the biggest agencies in in Hollywood. So he signs Oren Pelly. Now, in order to try and get this dude work in Hollywood, he starts sending out the uh, like a DVD of Paranormal Activity, sort of as his calling card. 
But Paramount takes a look at it and they're like, well, we think that's good. Let's just put that out as a movie instead of hiring him to make like, you know, Nightmare on Elm Street 17 or something. Yeah, yeah. And so uh, so they pick up the movie and uh, DreamWorks gets involved. DreamWorks is at this point owned by Paramount because they have um, entered into the world and failed miserably and uh, and have now had to rebrand just as a, a sort of brand rather than a studio. Um, I didn't really know that. Yeah. Well, yeah. in 1995, yeah. when they started, remember, like, David Geffen was like, yeah, and we're going to have DreamWorks, the, the, the record label, and we're going to have... DreamWorks, the fucking oh, right. lot. We're going to build a lot in California. It's going to be as big as the 20th Century Fox lot. And then it was yeah. like, all right, you know what? Paramount owns us, and we put out three movies <laughs> <years. laughs> um, So Spielberg, of course, still involved with uh, DreamWorks, gets a look at, uh, at Paranormal Activity. He thinks it's great, but he doesn't like the ending. And so he says to Oren Pelly... Um, Nice to meet you, fellow Jew. I'm willing to help you out because um, I relate to you on that level. And uh, he, um, he, he, he says, here's 215 grand. You shoot a new ending, all right? That's like way more than the movie ever cost <laughs> just to shoot yeah. the ending. And uh, so yeah. he goes off and he shoots two endings. Um, one of w- which is the ending that was in the original version that, f- that screened at the festival? This would have been the one you saw on the internet. Okay, I think it's the one where she kills Mika, but it's off screen. And then you see her go into the room and she's sitting up by the bed like comatose. And then cops break in. Oh. And and they hear a sound in the background and shoot her to death. All right, and then so they, they cut the, those right poor Aaron? bastard cops out of the movie. Yeah, yeah. Now, my Aaron, you've seen it. Re, re, you've rewatched it recently. Is that accurate? The the version that was uh, that was one of the uh, alternate endings. So I I don't know. It didn't say which one was which, but the one that I saw um, that I streamed had the the ending where the guy where where she walks away and she's obviously possessed and then she basically throws Mika through a door and then he falls down and then she gives a spooky face to the camera and uh, it ends. Is okay, that's, that's the version the I saw. Isn't that the theatrical? That's, that's correct. That's not the that that's the correct that's the theatrical version the one I like best. There's the version that I saw with the cops and then there's another version yeah, the theatrical ending is the only one with special effects. Like, all the other shit he just shot on the camera, and this is, like, I guess where the majority of that two hundred grand went towards. So what was the other one, like the original one? Okay, so Aaron, do you want to say that? Or do you want me yeah, to say the, the third ending was um, Katie leaves the bedroom. She wakes up in the middle of the night. She leaves the bedroom, and she's possessed at this point. She picks up a butcher knife. Uh, walks over to Mika, stabs him, and then she walks in front of the camera and then just slits her own throat and right. okay. died and falls down dead. Got yeah. it. Well, they don't want that ending, of course, because uh, that sort of uh, negates franchise potential. And that's 2009. Iron Man has happened. Everything's a franchise. And okay. the first ending would negate that, too, because the cops shoot her dead. So, exactly. Yeah, but maybe the maybe the next movie begins with a cop possessed. Well, there you go. A lot of them are these days. Yeah. Well, listen to you, Henry. Gal, very political with it there. <laughs> no, 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 not me ever. A cap, <laughs> right? All cops are possessed. Um... <laughs> yeah. So I, I like what the I actually like the theatrical ending, the the one for the reshoot. I think that was actually a good idea. Uh, Word. So actually, when they first picked it up, the idea that Paramount had was they wanted to re- just redo the entire movie. You know, like that. Re- idea. Yeah. Reshoot the whole thing. And then like Spielberg, in his infinite wisdom, was just like, I think you just need to reshoot the ending. Like there is the movie. <laughs> Good call, Stevie. Yeah. Yeah. You know, he he woke up from his video games working on the BFG script and, and uh, <laughs> pitched in. Uh, yeah. All right, so 
This film ends up coming out September 25th, 2009 in theaters, and it makes $193 million at the box office, uh, which is good for number 30 for the year in America. Right there, wow. uh, made slightly less than Couples Retreat, which was a comedy that I saw in theaters with Vince Vaughn. And, uh, oh. and uh, slightly more money than Watchmen. Hmm. Good! Yeah, that's nice to hear. Isn't that nice? Mm-hmm. A movie I saw in right. theaters as well. Me too. All right. Uh, this was nominated for some awards, Henry. Do you have the themes up? I do. What are we looking for? Oh, oh well, you know, probably Peoples and Teen, but let's start. It's nominated for like a legitimate award. We usually don't talk about the Independent Spirit Awards, but I just, you know, I, it's rare that we see a horror movie get nominated for such a prestigious award. Oh, look at the word prestigious being pronounced that particular way. Yeah, so it was nominated for Best First Feature, Oren Pelly, you know? And, uh, you know, his career didn't really turn out. He hasn't done mm-hmm. anything since this. No, but he probably got some money and laurels from all the other sequels, right? I mean, he was got money from them. Producing. I've got to assume that Paramount gave him a nice heaping helping of money to go sit over there and, and stay away from the franchise. <laughs> Uh, right. Mm-hmm. I tell you, man, that that's that sucks. But at the same time, I, I'd be fucking thrilled mm-hmm. if, if I made one movie and then they were like, "Here's your paycheck. Thanks for the. Th- you know what? We don't really need you anymore. But here's like a million bucks. Yeah. If you just, I'll be like, all right. Well, Hollywood, you know, Hollywood was like, we need Christians in charge of the franchise. Let's give this Jew his payoff. That's all they care about anyway. <laughs> And uh, he'll go over there and we'll hire Todd Williams to make the next one. <laughs> yeah. The other film I see him credited for as a director is uh, 2015's Area 51. Yeah, I know. And that. I saw something to his. What? I saw something to his. I, I, can't, pull, I can't pull up Lord Area Rocks 51? That's the only other thing he's ever made. He's produced a few other things, but that's well, he's had a, he's had he a little more success as a writer. He did this thing, the Chernobyl Diaries, that I remember coming out, and he created the show The River that I watched the first episode of on ABC. That was sort of the first. Of it, it was the first, and I believe only ever network television found footage show. Oh, oh, beautiful! Well, that I mean, unless fun. you count like The Office or whatever, right? <laughs> Yeah, no, I uh, he did something else. I'll have to pull up Letterboxd after because I, I checked it last night and he he saw he did something that I've seen. So he, I don't know what you're looking at, but well, so, we're looking at the accurate stuff, and uh, you're probably looking yeah. at the inaccurate stuff. He's yeah, got a pro- not- he's got producer credits on some Blumhouse properties because he was involved in the early days of Blum, Insidious. No, it's that's not it. not it. Is it the Bay? Is it the Lords of Salem? I'm literally naming everything he has a production credit on. I don't want his production credits. I want his directing credits. He has he's directed two things. Paranormal Activity and 2015's Area 51. I'll check it out. All right. Well, you get back to us, Henry, because <laughs> I am very I curious back. where you're going with this. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. all right. All right, so the Independent Spirit Awards, he loses that award to uh, Scott Cooper, your man, for Crazy Heart. Oh, yeah, that was the big, uh, everybody loved Crazy Heart. I still think it's probably the best movie he's made. That's inaccurate. But, <laughs> I mean, uh, what else has he made? At, at least good. that one, like, is a remake of a good movie, Tender Mercies. <laughs> <laughs> I uh, know Scott Cooper's best movies are Out of the Furnace and Hostels, obviously. And that fucking guy, he's down in the dirt making horror with the rest of us now. With I want to see Antlers. Yeah, where that movie's supposed to come out like eight years ago. What yeah, the fuck? I on? finally see reviews coming in, so it's got to be in the next week or so. All right, all right, all right. Next, the MTV Awards recognized Paranormal Activity. <laughs> all right, let me pull it up. Aaron, do you want to cover the theme? <laughs> <laughs> You can give me some drums in the background. I mean, to add to my recording of it. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> oh, 
problem for my EMTV. Wow. Yeah, man. I know that riff. Yeah. What's that riff? Money for Nothing. By Dire Straits? Yeah. <laughs> I think it actually does have a, that a lot. Many, have a drum solo at the beginning of it, too. Many say oh, the yeah. greatest intro of any rock and roll song of all time. It's a great intro. Hmm. I what, love that. What's the best opening drum solo, Aaron? Is it Money for Nothing or In the Air Tonight? Well, that's not really an, an opening drum solo. That's like a halfway through the song. Hey, listen. That, that as far off. as I'm concerned, well, that's when the song begins. That's when the song really kicks in. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. They're both very good. All right. All right. <laughs> Think about that. All right. MTV. Katie but Featherton. Our erstwhile lead lady. Good for her. Okay. I, I know you're such a Katie Featherton fan. I think she does a good job in this movie. Uh, you sound like a proud parent. It's you like, do. Yes. You know, God bless her. I, I get it. She's doing her best. She's basically like a mentally challenged kid, you know. Just hey! like, yeah. Good for you. Good for you. I don't think so. I think she's good. She's yeah. all right. All right. So she was nominated for the best scared as shit performance, which, That's you know. Funny we've, category. We've encountered mm -hmm. that before. And uh, mm -hmm. she lost to the great Amanda Seyfried for Jennifer's Body. Oh, well, yeah. A very fine film. Uh, how about the People's Choice Awards, Henry? Oh, the people uh, chose this movie. I think so. At least that's what the song leads you to believe. Yeah. The people make the choice. It's up to the people. It chooses they see fit. Fit, fit, choosing people's choice awards. It's the choice, 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 choice awards, awards for the people. Yeah. Wow, they're catchy. You know, it's it's clearly made it its way out to California, so that's pretty cool. One of these days, I do want to remix a couple of these. Uh... Oh, I'd love it. Just don't make them so spooky. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, all right. It was nominated for favorite independent movie at the People's Choice Awards. Did not, couldn't even conceive that that could be a category at the People's Choice Awards. Uh, but yeah. they they gave it to their favorite independent film of the year, Brad Pitt's Inglorious Bastards. What an independent film! <laughs> Boy, really making discoveries all day long. Uh, <laughs> Seriously? Yes. Oh my gosh. So well, that's not fair. I mean, what, I don't. What, to the people, on. to the people, they only see one weird movie a year, so they save it for Quentin. <laughs> yeah. All right, some of their handsomest stars, you know, go along with those movies. So why not see them? Yeah. Teen yeah. choice. What do you got? Oh, um. All right. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> it always sounds like you're getting sick at the end of that one. Like you're in the middle of a take and then just. I had, I had a mama cast chicken bone in my mouth <laughs> and it got stuck in my throat. Love it. Well, yeah. the teens, they gave it best horror movie of the year. They Good. Loved it. Don't they know everything always? They're always right, those teens. <laughs> I don't think the 2009 teens knew anything, man. The teens today really got their shit together. Those 2009 uh, teens, they? Yeah. they were just about, you know, bullying and MySpace pretty much. Yeah, teens don't have anything together ever in any generation, ever. I didn't, you didn't, Aaron didn't, nobody did. They do now, though. It's because of the okay. internet. They're organized. <laughs> All right. Uh, well, Micah Sloat. Or excuse me, Mika. It's spelled. It should be Mika, right? Yeah, I know. I don't know, man. I didn't even know Oren Pelly is. Uh, I always. I looked at his name like Oren Pelli. Mm. Yeah. Well, I don't know about that, but uh, listen, this is Mika is spelled M I C A H, as far as I'm concerned. It's Mika to me. It's Mika to me. 
I know that because I had an ex-girlfriend. We were getting kind of serious. We started talking about baby names. She wanted to name the kid Micah. This is how it was spelled. That's ah. how I remember. Mika, Look. of course. I know two Mikas. Mika Zabanajad from the New York Rangers and Mika Tan, famous Asian porn star. And both of them <laughs> spell it M-I-K-A. All right? <laughs> All right, Henry, come back to me. Uh, Mika Sloat, unfortunately, lost his award for best actor in a horror movie. Um, but I don't think he could have complained too much about this. He lost it to Leonardo DiCaprio for Shutter Island. Oh, well, that's going to happen. Yeah, That's going to happen? When is that going to happen? Mika Sloat nominated against Leonardo DiCaprio. You think that'll ever happen again? No, I mean, if you're, if you're up against Leo, you're going to lose. Yeah. I don't know about that. He's only won I'm one sure Oscar. Oscar. Do you remember yeah. the, that the, when he won the Revenant, everyone was like, oh, finally, finally he has an Oscar, for heaven's sake. Yeah, and he had to torture himself to, to do that. That's right. Yeah. Good. That's right. I hope every Great. time he needs anything good, he has to go in the wilderness. <laughs> That's not true. A right? while since I... It's uh, been a while since uh, I had to dig up my Leo DiCaprio impression. Maybe it's time. Do it. Yeah, I, we yeah. haven't heard that in a long time. <laughs> <laughs> your most abstract impression. I just saw your face clench up before the impression happened. I'm like, what is it? Oh. <laughs> it really is a shame that, it, that it's an audio podcast. Like, I, I feel like I get a lot of gold from Henry every week. Just like. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah. I, I, get, I get to see a different side of the show than everybody else. Uh, yeah. All yeah. right. Um, I got my better impressions, honestly. Um. I still think your best one is that one janitor from, uh, no, security guard from, from Barnes well, That's real life, sure. The real life ones never get outdone, but in terms of the celebrity. Yeah, yeah. I hear you. Janitor. He wasn't a janitor. Yeah, he was a security guard. All right. Listen, there was a difference. The janitors wore brown. Hey. <laughs> because, they, you know, it's like dirt and shit. That's what they needed to look like. Uh, uh, yeah we are a pro union a pro worker uh prog podcast uh proud proud broadcast uh don't let anyone fool you with the anti-genitorial talk it's not i'm not i'm anti them making them wear that shit it's demeaning i'm pro janitor i love all janitors all janitors they make the world go round they do. I've never had a janitor be an asshole. You ever have a janitor go like, fuck you? No. 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 You know why? Opposite. You know why? Because, because they're they beaten down and dehumanized in every aspect of their life, so they can't really assert themselves in social That's situations correct. anymore. That's correct. Mm -hmm. Yep. All right. Uh, so All right. this movie, it opens with a bit of a scroll. Is Paramount. They'd like to thank the families of the actors who died in the making of the film. Uh, or uh, Mika and, and Katie, you know. Because we're supposed to believe that this is real. Mm -hmm. It's one of those, yeah. all right? Had they done this much between Blair Witch Project and this, Aaron? That's what I was trying to think. Because, like, Blair Witch was the thing that really brought it into the mainstream. I mean, there were other films, like... Uh, like Cannibal Holocaust and The Last Broadcast that all kind of did the whole found footage genre. But I think, um, what's it called? Blair Witch must have been the one that really put it on the map, at least for this generation. But I can't really recall anything in between. That's the thing. There was no follow-up. Like, Blair Witch came out. It was huge. It was the number mm -hmm. one. I think it might still be the number one independent film of all time in terms of like um, profit. Profit, yeah. Mm -hmm. and, more uh, than more than this because this more than this. Yeah, this was number two. Okay, I thought this beat it. All right, all right. No, yeah, Blair Witch was was a phenomenon. But uh, th so the weird thing about that movie is, I feel like now when something hits. You know, or usually even then, like studios are like, all right, well, let's rip that off. Let's do that now. But in the yeah. wake of Blair Witch, there was no real 
found footage shit. It was just sort of considered an extension on how hot horror was at the time, like since Scream had come out in like 96, 97. And, and so they, it, they eventually even sequelized the Blair Witch Project and took the found footage aspect away from it and made it mm-hmm. a more mainstream standard, you know, film horror movie. Yeah. Uh, which, and it tanked. And that led them to believe, like, there was no money for Blair Witch anymore. It seems crazy. Like, Oren Pelly, it wasn't even an original idea. It was just that he saw the Blair Witch Project, and he was like, there's money to be made there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hey, yeah, it's very smart thinking. Um, speaking of Blair Witch, which I'm sure we'll cover eventually on this show, uh, I think the the second one was what was that book of shadows that's pretty tough book uh, of shadows blair witch 2 which oddly yeah. is directed it was the f- debut feature film by a documentarian but it's not shot in documentary style what a weird nice. fucking decision on every level <laughs> but i liked uh very much the one that came out in like 2015 i, I saw it. that i saw it in theaters and i was pretty impressed who I, I made was that very- uh, oh, I think I like that I, director. I think that's the director who did uh, Your Next. I'm not oh, I just saw that. I just saw that for the first time. It's Adam Wingard, dude. So that is, yeah, I gave it four stars on here. Yeah, yeah, it's Adam Wingard. Your Next, The Guest, VHS, VHS Two. He's he's no joke, man. I like Wingard. He's great. All yeah, right, thanks. All right, Wingard. He did Blair Witch. We'll get to Blair Witch. We'll do it. He likes boy. Uh, he works sometimes, I think, with your boy uh, Swanberg. I think they're buddies. Well, yeah. Well, your next is kind of like that. That's a weird movie because it, it uses a lot of the people from like the Chicago indie mumblecore scene, but yeah. in like this oddly mainstream like slasher movie. It's cool. It's, uh, it was a cool movie. Great. Yeah, yeah, I figured you'd like it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. I got it right here. Todd Williams directed. Oh, do- uh, Todd Williams? We weren't talking about him before. We were talking about Oren Pelly. I was talking about Todd Williams. Well, that's weird, considering we're talking about the first Paranormal Activity movie, and he directed the second one, which we're not up to yet. Name. Somebody had said his name, Todd Williams, really quick, and then I thought we were on that thread about him. Okay. No, it was just uh, yeah. his name was spoken for, like, one second. Correct, and I latched onto that, and I wouldn't let go. You really did. You hung on to it right to now. We're like 40 minutes into the episode. Yeah, I didn't realize. Yeah. All okay, right. so neither, neither of us was wrong or right. <laughs> Shut the fuck up. <laughs> All right. So night one, let's talk about it. It's September 18th, 2006 is when this film takes place. Where were you uh-huh. guys? Where were, what was happening September 18th, 2006? We were in rehearsals probably for started forming our band. That Our Holy. first gig. In December 2006 in the Bronx. So Aaron and me and Nate, and we were buddies with Jason. We were probably just gallivanting around town the fall of 2006. We were most likely year. drunk. And... Most likely. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Would that and, have been uh, a more interesting movie? The Lord Awesome story? Yeah. That would be a fun story. A bunch of drunk guys in 2006 just, like, trying to form a band. Is that a better movie than Paranormal Activity? I think it might be. Might it, be. Yeah. Was, that the, it. was that the Hall- – I think that Halloween, that, that October, I think Nate had us over to his apartment, his little tiny apartment, and you guys made me watch Evil Dead 2, you and Nate. Oh, well, yeah. I forget. Like, did you enjoy that, or was that when you were in the hating phase? Because I remember you used to hate it. Yeah, I, that at that moment, I did not think I was understanding it, liking it in any way. Um, no, that's right. That we were, me and Nate were losing our shit because we had watched it like a gazillion times. Because that, like, I think that's both of ours. You can't among sit our favorite down films. somebody to watch a movie. You have to let it come <laughs> to them. I learned. Yeah. Yeah, I used to do this all the time when I was younger. You'd like, hey, girlfriend, sit down and watch this fucking movie that I like. <laughs> yeah. Fucking, yeah, yeah, yeah. They're never gonna like, like it as much as you are in the same way as you. Even like if if they, a lot of times you'll watch it and. Hate it just because it's your impulse to hate it because you're being forced to watch the movie. And then you mm-hmm. think about it later and you're like, oh, that was actually a pretty interesting movie. 
Yeah, well, you know, it took me another 10, 15 years to like that movie till when we did it on the show. But uh, I think I was also just, that's not a great atmosphere to watch the movie. We all had our girlfriends there. Everyone was hanging out, talking. I couldn't really watch it, you know. Yeah, and, and you need the context of, like, the other film to kind of, like, I had no, be in on the joke. It's, it's yeah, like, it, yeah. if you're not really in on the joke, I can see that movie being, like, insufferable. Like, I actually saw um, Army of Darkness first out of all three of those and i was just confused oh I mean, yeah because obviously like you know you're starting right at the end but then it's like i didn't get any of the sense of humor and i was just wondering like why it was so goofy and yeah, yeah. it was sort of promoted that way right like i feel like when army of darkness yes. came out it wasn't presented as like from the evil dead characters are back and better than ever it was just sort of like here's a new movie it looks kind of weird Mm -hmm. I recall the trailers when I was like 11 or 12. I didn't know what the fuck it was, but I thought it was some scary movie being 11 or 12. I didn't know anything about, you know, get that at all. But uh, uh, Well, let's talk about this scary movie. <laughs> it's, oh, it's, yeah. it's about a man and wife. Are they married? Fiance, in, I think. No, I believe she says they're engaged oh. to be engaged. Yeah, they're just boyfriend and girlfriend. Uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah. It, well, you can understand why, you know, he's a little better looking than she is. Uh, hey! What? I think she is very attractive. I do I'm too, but I think, I think Mika's on a different level. He's a handsome man. Mika's a handsome man, but I, I think that uh, Katie Featherstone Weather is, is very, very attractive. No one's arguing. I think Katie could date a Henry Papali, but maybe not a Mika Sloat. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, so, you know. I was just like, just, just for, for the record, I would like an objection from the, the audience, and it would like it to be sustained by another audience member. Thank you very much. All right. Well, it's it's noted, and it's on the record, and I'll let okay. you know if it's sustained. Thank uh, you, Count. <laughs> you're welcome. <laughs> I, 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 I uh, demand you approach the bench. Okay. So... <laughs> What's the premise? They're uh, they're together. He's very attractive. She's mildly attractive. They uh, they're living in a house together, alone, and uh, spooky shits happening. Like right from the beginning, right? It's already happening when the movie starts. Yeah, and I I think one of the things that I like about the movie that I did not remember at all was that they make it clear through very natural dialogue, and I think that's where a lot of people can fall prey to very bad acting, and I'm sure people think this is very bad acting, but I think they do a fine job given what they're given. Uh, but there's a little line thrown in there. Once things start to get a little hairy, where Mika kind of just casually says to her, you know, this would have been something helpful to me to learn about you and your past before... We moved in together. Yeah. And that says a maybe whole lot. You, like, maybe you could have told me this yesterday. <laughs> right? <laughs> the real wedding singer moment. Very nice. Yeah, but like that was interesting to me. I hadn't remembered that now because I was thinking that when I was watching it. I was like, I don't know if you were, you guys had been thinking this at all, but I was literally going like, well, I've met a lot of crazy women, like crazy people on dates and stuff. And I think I'd want to know. If they said they had paranormal activities in, in their past or thought but, they had paranormal activities, I wouldn't want that to come out. But see, once to me, we to me it would be a red flag that they think paranormal activity is real. It wouldn't yeah. be a red flag that they're haunted by a demon. Like, like, it, like the way he presents it there is like, I love you, Katie. You're the love of my life. But uh, frankly... If I knew you were possessed by a demon, I might have second guessed this relationship. Uh, well, that's my point. That's my point. But I like that touch because that means she's ne she hasn't said anything. Yeah, in but I. Relationship. But to me, like it's it, it. I'd be out of there. Like everything. Like this is you're full of shit. I don't believe anything you're saying. I I love sort of that Mika never gets on board with it. Like, yeah. even at the end yeah. of the movie, he's, like, going to sleep next to her, like, I guess we'll fucking film ourselves some more, like, uh. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's, it's, it just seems like a hassle more than anything else, and, and uh, I can relate to that, because everything's well, a hassle. I, I think he's on board by, by the time that, you know, the pictures are scratched and all this other weird shit's happening. I think I mean, that he is spooked. 
I think that he's spooked, but I don't think he's ever 100% on board with that the explanation for all this is purely supernatural. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, right. What do you think about that, Aaron? Um, no, I, I, I agree. Like, if uh, that would definitely be a big, big red flag. Um, which actually brings me to an interesting question because I feel like this movie, this whole franchise, I think the mileage may vary for everyone depending on your belief in ghosts. Hmm. Do either of you guys believe in ghosts no. or even like? No, we don't. No. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I don't either. But I feel like this is the type of movie that I believe, like, if you have any sort of inclination about ghosts, it really would draw you in a lot more. And I even have a theory that this is one of the reasons why it's so popular is that it really um, it attracts the, the Christian demographic, because if you think about it, it's a bloodless movie. They specify that it's a demon, not necessarily a ghost. So that that kind of like brings in more. Of like the the Christian sort of theology, um, theology, yeah, yeah. and yeah, um, yeah all, all the all the jump scares and stuff are like I said, completely bloodless, and it's um, yeah, it, it's it seems like something that would fly really well with that sort of group, and I don't even know if there, there might be like an f bomb or something dropped in there. A yeah, there's times. a few, there's a few, but fuck. like yeah, if they if they were to wa- like watch like. Uh, a t- television version of it or even like uh I'm, I'm sure i'm not sure if like blockbuster i mean obviously blockbuster doesn't do it anymore but i wonder if they did a version where it was like a pg-13 version or something where they cut out all of, like the swears and no nah, it was more the other way movie. around like there'd be a pg-13 that came out in theaters and then blockbuster would put together like an unrated edition <laughs> yeah um, yeah, I mean, that's an interesting take on the mileage. I mean, I, there's a lot of dumb people in the world, as we know, uh, who do believe in ghosts. No offense to anybody out there. <laughs> I mean, mo- a lot of people believe in ghosts. I, I, to yeah, me, but- there's something specific. Like, the, the question w- growing up was always, like, do you believe in ghosts? Do you believe in aliens, right? And mm-hmm. I always believe in aliens just because that seemed logical to me. Like, the universe is enormous, like we can't see, like, infinite numbers of galaxies. <laughs> so, like, fucking probably there's other life out there somewhere. Uh, whereas yeah. ghosts, if you want to believe in ghosts, to me, you have to believe in the afterlife. And mm-hmm. if you want to believe in the afterlife, you have to believe in some sort of religion. You have to believe in God. And I just don't have any of that. I, I think God is bull- I think people that believe in God are dumber than me. Like I really, yeah. I'm, I, I'm an asshole about that. I understand that, and I am and, too. and if I tell myself like, am I being an asshole about it? In my brain, my brain tells me no. You just think that because you're smarter than them. Well, you, you, you're being rational and you know believing in science, and that's of course what I do as well. Uh, now I do think that the the thing Aaron said is interesting because if it if it I don't I don't think that paranormal activity just because we're talking about that movie in particular this movie I, I don't think that precludes anyone with our views from having just as good an entertainment or interest in that movie mm-hmm. um, I, I guess if you do believe that shit's possible this movie could send you into a fucking tailspin um, but having said that I do appreciate that the movie kind of is so direct and so unpretentious about its presentation in terms of let's let's actually take a perfect example of one that does not do this like this which is a great movie that we we all like I'm sure but the conjuring I knew the conjuring it, would come up they're so weirdly similar aren't they you know they're presenting that as though it's dead serious. This happened. These people are real demonologists. They've, you know, and like that's where you kind of like, uh, if you're like us, you kind of like step back and be like, all right, it's a fucking horror movie, man. Let me just enjoy the horror movie. You don't got to tell me that it's an actual fucking case and all that shit. You know? I mean, nothing even happens for a while. Like the early scares or like the creepy shit that's going on in this movie are like this morning, like one morning she's like, Mika. The keys moved. I definitely put the keys on the counter last night, and here they are on the floor. Isn't that fucking terrifying? And if I was Mika, I'd be like, go take a shower and get ready for your day. (laughs) (laughs) All right? Get out of my face with this early in the morning. You're going to be late. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But that's what makes the movie scary, right? It's very effective in that, in those banal moments, uh, and, and a lot of it happening in daylight. 
Uh, and another thing we didn't even mention yet, but even though there's a lot of shaky camera movement, that the, it's I, I personally I think it's the sh- there's the stationary camera is has not it had not been done I don't think in a found footage movie. That's original, like just putting up house cameras and letting that kind of or his camera being you know focused on that. Sure, mm-hmm. you know I think it's very influenced by Big Brother. Yeah. Oh. I mean, I don't even know if that's true, but like, I just feel like that aesthetic became more ingrained in in American film and television at this point, like like security footage. Yeah, yeah. that's mm. an interesting take on it. So this is sort of like a blending between Big Brother and Blair Witch, sort of. I think at a certain point, like they audiences in the '90s or the '80s might not have had patience for this movie, mm-hmm. whereas you know, yes. Enough people are used to watching security footage at this point that like <laughs> you can go in and watch an entire movie of it. Yeah. <laughs> Here's my idea. I got a great idea. Everyone likes security footage. We're <laughs> going to do a whole movie with security footage. But there's a ghost. And what else is uh, going to be? Nothing. It's just security footage. And a ghost. So, like, this ghost comes in and he does, like, a lot of terrifying things, right? No. What is... No. No, He just moves the keys. You don't see a ghost. (laughs) There's there's no ghost. You don't see him. He just takes the sheets off her legs. That's that's it. Opens a door that was already closed. Here's (laughs) $15,000. Here's the thing. Here's the thing, guys. It's... The door's gonna creak open a little bit. And then... And then... hear, Hear me out. Then it's going to creep back closed a little bit. All right? Oh, man. I'm going to bring it upstairs. I'm gonna, I like you, kid. I like the way. I like, I like the cut of your jib. I'm going to bring it upstairs. I'm going to show the guys. We're going to see what we're talking about here. All right, Oren. I'm going to get you a nice house and just stay there. All right. Hey, uh, Oren, you got, you got a girlfriend? Because we, uh, we have a nice couch over there in the uh, casting room. She's, you can wait while we're talking. Hey, to you. she's a Gentile. <laughs> All right, so <laughs> they bring in Dr. Friedrichs. How about that? Uh, he's yeah. uh, he's a psychic. He shows That's up. They have, they've always got to have a psychic in one of these movies. And the next one, it's, mm-hmm. uh, it's a Mexican housekeeper. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Which is great stuff. And uh, But here it's a <laughs> white doctor. And he comes in and tells them, yeah, I got news for you. It is spooky in here. I agree. Yeah. <laughs> Mm-hmm. <laughs> I like me because uh, complete. I mean, he's extremely rude to the man, but you know, I would have been uh, too. I guess I would be too. Yeah, and he uh, because any just... anytime I see a psychic in a movie, I'm like, you're a charlatan. I just I yeah. don't trust right. them. The second I I don't have that in me. I think like the suspension of disbelief to believe someone's a psychic. I guess I can if it's like an X Men movie and someone has like te- telepathic powers or something. I mean that's the thing. We're not trying to. Co- I'm not trying to come across as like obviously we we love movies with all this shit in them. It just doesn't mean we have to believe in it, but. Mm. You know, uh, it doesn't make the movie any less fucking scary or creepy. I will say this movie had a strange effect on me, though. The I've seen it like a couple of times before this viewing over the last decade, and it is a movie that never ever scares me the way like, like it did the first time. Oh, like it's, okay. It's heavily- upon yeah and i that doesn't happen to me too often like i was watching this like i actually know everything that's coming and even that last shot i was sitting there waiting for it it yeah. happened still good but the first time it happened i i've told the story on the show i fucking yelled and jumped backwards in my seat and was disturbed for an entire night because that was in my that was my halcyon horror days i, I, I was not yeah. I actually agree with you. I, you know, and I, I had this experience because watching it for the podcast, this was my first time watching it since I saw it the first time. I didn't see this movie in theaters. I watched it. I rented it from Blockbuster, I think. Um, and I watched it at home in the middle of the day. And I was by myself. The apartment was empty. And I was very fucking scared. I, sure. Yeah. And... 
I was looking around like I it was causing yeah. because you're in a house. I was like I think I was in my parents' house watching it. So it was like this big empty suburban house and Sure. Um it's not big. It's a, whatever. <laughs> and uh I just it felt big cuz I'm alone. And Yeah. Anyway, I I don't know. Watching it this time, I just didn't have that. I I think when you see these movies for the first time, I spend a lot of the movies like scanning the frame. Like I'm I'm anxious, so like I'm looking around. Like there's a lot of static frames in these movies. And then I think in the third one they started adding the swivel camera, <laughs> so there's even more to look around at. Uh, but in these, it's it's literally like a lot of yeah. H- Henry, you said there's shaky cam because Mika has like a handheld camera in the movie, right. but a lot of the movie is literally just stationary security footage. Yeah, and that's the better parts of it. I I, think, I agree, I but like once you once you do know what's happening, you don't have to like look around anymore. You, there's no. not that same level of anticipation, especially in the second one, which I think is made by more sort of a mainstream team of filmmakers, uh, and most of the shit that happens is in the center of the frame. Whereas in the first one, there's more shit happening around the edges. Mm. Um, yeah, I mean that creates a tension, though. That that was it's still there when I watch it. The first one, I've only seen this. I've seen all of them except for I think one of them. Uh, but the second one on my rewatch, I'd only seen it once. Uh, I didn't remember much of anything. But there's a tension that is created that that stays very steady throughout the movies. That's what it really is. I felt that way in the second one. To be honest, on a rewatch, this first one didn't pass water with me the way it once mm. did yeah okay i mean it didn't scare me the way it once did but i it didn't go up or down in my my view of it but um i mean how, how did you how many times have you seen this thing aaron uh this is the second time i've seen it um i thought i had seen the second one before but i guess i hadn't but um yeah i i feel like i i'm i'm kind of in camp dan with this one um i remember enjoying it i think mostly because of the jump scares because it's um i mean it does it does a good job of what it's trying to do with the jump scares but i mean like you know it's it's this all kind of feels like you know trickery sort of stuff like they it's they lull you into a false sense of security through just like boring you to death and then all of a sudden like slam a door or something like that uh and so it's it's like it it, for me it feels like an unearned scare Mm -hmm. it's like you know it's like Mm -hmm. the equivalent of like getting sucker punched at a library like of of course you're gonna get shocked but that was so specific have you been sucker punched at a library (laughs) (laughs) way too many times to count um but uh it's just i I, like i said the first time i i feel like if 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 the environment's right like you, you know watch it on loudspeakers super dark room um first time you'll probably enjoy it the best it just for i feel like every time you you rewatch it it's just not going to be as good at least for me but it sounds like it held up even better for you henry so that's it's, it's well, very interesting well, it held up but it didn't scare me mm-hmm. i mean that that's the i'm at a kind of a dilemma because i i, I think it's a superb movie i think it's mm-hmm. excellent i just but you know it, does it have to pass muster? Uh, is that a qualification for it to be rewatched over and over and no, over? I mean, maybe I, I, it's I, a one-time deal. In you know, terms maybe it's of a one-time deal. In terms of scares, that's a different thing. There needs to be something right. more. Like I, I rewatched Halloween today because I'm going to watch Halloween Kills later. Uh, mm-hmm. uh, the '78 one, and yeah. that movie doesn't scare me anymore. I've seen it probably right. 50 times in my life but who and, cares yeah. but like yeah. there's enough there carpenter puts together an incredible film and the score and the performances yeah. and mm-hmm. and and some of the moments it's so amazing it's a perfect movie in my opinion and Great. whereas this movie like once you're through being like spooked out the first time like what are you left with katie and mika i don't care that much <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I, but I just think for its originality and, you know, for uh, – it's it's very minimalist. It's short. Yeah. You know, it, it, it kind of just – it's got to like – it almost feels like, like a very honest, direct mission statement 
from mm-hmm. Horn Belly. Like, this is what I want to do with this, and these are my two actors, and uh, I hope you have a good time. And this is, what... and I just like that. It's just very simple, and it works. And I mean, and I'm not lying. Like Dan said, like uh, before, he's like, really? When I said uh, I saw it in the theater, and yes, I, I remember seeing it with a group of people, and. I mean, I was really, I liked horror at the time, but I wasn't, I wasn't as into it as both of you know. And, and, uh, holy fuck, man, when he, when his body gets thrown at the screen and then she makes that fucking face, <laughs> I, 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 I jumped backwards. I grabbed my girlfriend's arm and I was like, I was like, Brian, I was like, I was like, I was like uh, upset. I was like, <laughs> I was like, I do not, I did not enjoy that. That was unpleasant. I didn't ever want, don't ever, I don't want to do that. And it was a very funny night because, you know, afterwards we went for some beers with some people and they were just like, Jesus, man, that really affected you. I'm just like, I don't like certain horror movies. I'm just not a horror guy. And that just fucked me up. I don't need that to happen because I really felt like I had like, like a heart attack or something. Oh, Jesus Christ. Yeah, I know. It's crazy. And, and, and then like, you know, a year later too, I was watching fucking everything and and now yeah, it takes you're, you're a hard but, guy now yeah i am but back then when i saw it in the theater I, I guess it was just like a combination of also its originality i've never seen anything really like it in a theater mm-hmm. i never saw blair witch in the theater yeah. um yeah but thinking about it from a 2021 perspective in in the 12 years since this movie came out found footage horror has blown up it's like Oh yeah, I've seen first of all, it's of- so ridiculously easy to make them. They're, they mm-hmm. you can make them for so cheap. You don't have to hire big actors. Like the the amount of even just like little ones. There's three Hell House LLC movies now. Yeah, yeah. yeah. first one's very good. Yeah. I enjoyed the first one a lot. I haven't seen the sequels. Yeah, um, yeah. but I, I just think it's been done better, and it's been perfected and it makes more sense now too because back then we're watching these movies with people like carrying around video cameras like handheld dv cam like who are you showing these tapes to like all this is only for us the audience Mm. to watch after you die uh (laughs) so like to me it makes so much more sense in this day and age with like smartphones and shit where like you literally can where like you can have like a Sean Baker who makes the Florida project and Tangerine on on mm. or Tangerine specifically on his iPhone and then gets nominated for Oscars and shit like you can literally do that now so watching something like unfriended or spree or something like that like these screen horror movies make so much more sense to me than than this genre that's interesting because i mean i don't to me i don't know if they make more sense now because back then it was almost done out of necessity hmm. I mean, he had no money so that's what made him do this now no, no, it's no, done that, as a as a filmmaker, I understand what you're saying. I'm talking about in the world of the movie, if you really think about it, it makes no fucking sense why Mika is carrying around a handheld camera. Oh, wait, wait, wait. wait. Oh, but oh. we learn in the second film, he saw his, uh, what is it? Katie? Yeah, he was impressed by his brother in law carrying his camera around, exactly. but why was he carrying a camera sure. around? Yeah, hey, right. I want a camera too. Well, he got it in this movie. Is don't they say in the movie in the first movie that he got it because this shit's been going on for a few days and he wanted to document it? Doesn't he tell yeah, her that when yeah. she pulls up? Yeah. So, yeah. Because um, the demon was transferred to her from her sister, as we find out in the prequel, Henry. That's absolutely correct. Uh, yeah, I didn't remember any of that either. Um, I remembered that. I think that's the most intriguing part about this franchise to me. I, I sort of like the way the movies fit together in interesting yes, ways. They're very strange. Yeah, yeah. And three, I believe, is like Katie and her sister as, as, kids. as kids. That's an even crazier movie. I mean, we'll cover it next week, but I think they're carrying around a fucking camera in like 1983 in that movie. Yeah. Did you see that? Either of you? The third I saw one? the third one. That was I the believe- last one I saw. Oh, okay, I've seen the yeah. first one up until recently. Now I've seen oh, wow. one and two. Um, <laughs> yeah, no, they, they're, they're what are they carrying those old wind up like brownie cameras or something? <laughs> I don't know, them? I, we had one in my house in '88. This the movie takes place in '88, and it's just like the big with yeah, the video. Yeah, it's, like, uh, it, it's like that J.J. Yeah. Abrams movie, Super Eight. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So uh, 
yeah, I, I, I recall digging that movie, but again, I only saw it once. So, oh, um, Paranormal Activity three is definitely a better movie than Super Eight. I'll say that. Ooh. I don't like Super Eight at all. Fuck that movie. Huh? Yeah. Oh, I was fine by that. It was okay, <laughs> Jay Abrams. I saw that was. Remember, I saw Tommy Wiseau on the way out of the theater for that movie. <laughs> really? Yeah. <laughs> That's better than the movie. I was with Casey. Oh, was a, was I saw film, Casey. Dan. I saw I saw Super Eight with Casey, and then we parted ways. And like the second he left me, I saw Tommy Wiseau. I felt so bad. I tried to like get his attention. And shit. Oh man. Yeah. <laughs> um. All right. So uh, whatever. What do you give this movie? Aaron, you're the guest. Um, I personally, I, I. <sighs> I didn't really enjoy it. I was bored, and especially like I said, once once you you know the tricks of like the you know that it's going to be just like riddled with jump scares. Like I didn't really get any of those. I didn't get spooked by them. It just was kind of like more annoying because like I knew when stuff was going to happen. They had a couple like little like things in it that were impressive. Like with the I liked the little Ouija board scene where the Ouija started moving on its own and then caught fire. Yeah, cool. like little little things like that. And I admire him for what he's doing, like I, I, I especially because it was kind of like the first, you know. Besides, like we said, the Blair Witch was probably the first, but this is the first of like this so era. We're, we're going to reward this movie footage. for its significance. Yes. Okay. So that that bumped it from a one to a two for a me. A one. He was at a wow. one. I reserve I reserve yeah. ones for completely unwatchable films where I'll say that this one is a notch above unwatchable. It just ah. like, when, when you're I'm sure like if you watch this in theaters right when it came out when it's still a fresh concept you got giant speakers like to like blast you with sound when when the jump scares happen and you had the audience like tension there with you. I I'm sure that that may be the best way to watch it and would probably would I, I probably would have had a bigger uh, better score if it was those circumstances but for this one it was it was just boring wow and um i don't know ghosts shocker something about ghost movies just, dude i'm just with you on ghosts i'm down on ghosts i've decided recently <laughs> that i don't think i'm gonna watch that many ghost horror movies anymore. They never do anything for me. Yeah, like I didn't like The Conjuring or An- Annabelle. Like any of those. Did you watch that? Did you watch the things. Fear Street thing on Netflix? No, no, I didn't. Okay, I watched the first one of them, uh-huh. and you know, the way it was advertised, it looked like a slasher movie to me, which uh-huh. I fucking love slasher movies, so I was excited. And then, like halfway through the movie, it's like a ghost movie, and I'm like, fuck this! <laughs> they they <laughs> they bamboozled me. I was trying to watch a slasher movie. I ended up watching a ghost movie. It was boring. So <laughs> yeah, I, I passed on those. It it looked like an, an adult version of Stranger Things or something. Like I, I was just. Not I, I the read the people. Fear Street books as a kid, so I was sort of excited about it. But the oh, but, but the movies. I didn't even know it was based on anything. Yeah, yeah R, it, I, it's based on like you know R.L. Stein wrote Goosebumps for like kids. Fear yeah. Street was his series for like teens. Okay. Oh. Yeah. So I read a lot of them. They're they're good books i don't think the movie has much to do with the books at all though it's just like a branding thing they called it fear street sort of like how those fucking goosebumps movies are just little horror movies for kids called goosebumps yeah (laughs) um all right so i i feel like we're gonna be all over the map here i'm gonna give it a three henry yeah uh, my heart wants to give it uh a five but i'm not going to because i think it's really amazing but i'm not gonna give it a five um because I did realize that, you know, it 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 did go down a notch for me just because I, I, I don't I hate taking points off for rewatchability because it's kind of an invalid thing to do, but uh, there are dull moments, dull spots. Uh, but overall, <laughs> I would say I, I would agree with that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But overall, I still think it's a really, really good. Uh, good uh, movie, and uh, I'm gonna go with four. All right, four I'm I'm gonna give you some trivia about the franchise right here. I think this is the first time in franchise history for one movie every grade was considered. Listen to this: Aaron went from a one to a two. Okay. I was at a three, and Henry went from a five to a four. Wow, it's a full nah. spread. Uh, it has there what ever been you- a more variably successful film? 
I don't know. We really ran the gamut of all five ratings. Uh, Dan, what did you do? You remember what you had rated this on? Yeah, I had I had it as a four, and I went down to it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. What was your guys' favorite end? Henry, sorry, which was your favorite ending? You said the one where the the body flew at the yeah the theatrical, the one they reshot the 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 theatrical with throwing the body and then her crazy face. Uh, and I think that's another reason it freaked me out so much in the movie was because keep in mind I watched it on a shitty rip, but that ending was not. Not only did I not see that ending coming like any other audience member, I had seen another ending. Did you think mm-hmm. the so film? Like, did you think that perhaps the projector was possessed, and that's why you were getting a different ending? <laughs> yeah, well, I I strongly believe in I, I I don't believe in ghosts, but I do believe in demon possession. I didn't make that clear earlier. So <laughs> uh, I love I love that the the psychic refers them to a demonologist like a fucking doctor. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I, I do want to make a quick point before we do MVP, L, MVP, LVP. And it does happen a lot in the second movie, too. I wonder if you guys have any uh, theories on this. I've, I think I brought this up before in The Conjuring or whatever the fuck else we've covered like this. Why do demons and ghosts take so long to make their point and get what they want? I don't get it. I, like, I think what it is is... You no? Know? I think... They're little, they're little tricksters. You know, they first yeah. thing just, they enjoy fucking with people. That's why they're just moving keys and stuff. And after a while, like, like well, I got to stop fucking around. Time to get down to business. Yeah. Aaron's right. I would say that the, the proper answer to this question is they're little tricksters. The little tricksters. They're just uh, little tricksters. Little and, and you know what? They don't like to blow their wad at first. They're like rush. You know, they like really build up. I, yeah, I, I feel like if this was happening to me, at some point I would just sit down with the Ouija and I'd be like, look. Just- no, no brand names, please, in this film. We are not allowed to say the word Ouija. <laughs> I was speaking of the movie Ouija Origin of Evil. Oh, well, we got to cover um, that franchise. What a, a Ouija franchise. Oh, uh, yeah, I feel like I'd sit down. I'd be like, all right, look, I see you move my coat. All right, I already can't have fun <laughs> You got my keys. You spooked out my lady. You, They'd you never my- get me on this stuff, though, because I would just assume it was me. Like, every, all of this shit, I would assume, oh, I must I'm, have knocked the keys on the floor at some point. I'm saying if, though, no, but I'm saying if then I saw something like, you know, uh, my, my girlfriend's face turned into, like, a contorted uh, version of the demon from the Tim What's-His-Face plays in Legend. Oh, Tim uh, Curry. Darkness? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, correct, correct. Darn So I just be kind of like, you know what? If you're here to kill me, I'm here. You can just have me. I life is not that awesome. Just do it. Just, let's what just... are you waiting for? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, all right. MVP, LVP. It's a weird one. I might go the Dan route on this one. I wasn't going to, but I might go the Dan breaking the rules. Oh, yeah. Uh, well, lately Dan's been reverting back to what I used to do no, in the early. No, I'm I'm right on every time. Um, okay, it's not related to what I was going to say, but um, uh, I already know your MVP LVP. I know your MVP LVP. Can I predict yours? Go ahead. Your MVP is going to be my, Mika, and your LVP is going to be Katie. No, I see. I I only started going in on Katie because I could tell that you have a crush on her, and no, uh, no. you have a crush on someone in every movie we watch, Henry. Right? Uh, so they're movie stars. What are you gonna you do? are such a little crusher. You you you, you fall hard oh. and fast, don't you? Like I feel like by the end of these movies, you're just like, I want to marry Katie Featherton, and that's gonna be with you for like three days, and then you move on. <laughs> no, I can't deny that. I can neither confirm nor deny that. But what I can't, <laughs> what I can't say is that some just last the test of time. Like knew me, repace, forget about it. We all know your love of new me rapace. You you might call the love has been around so long. It's like old me rapace. <laughs> Look at this guy! What a trickster! Uh, I, I'm gonna go MVP Orin Pelly because he did the whole fucking thing, man. Mm. Everything, and that is he is a, that's a that's a feat. LVP, I don't know, man. I don't think either of them are that great, but I certainly don't think either of them are bad. Uh, oh, you know what? I'll go with the LVP. I think the weakest actor, honestly, in the movie, and it's not just because the role's stupid. It's a predictable role. Could have gotten somebody kind of wild for yeah, for the psychic. He's yeah. kind of mis- Absolutely. 
Yeah, you know, he's very... You know, I sort of... I, my instinct was to agree with you. Because that's what I thought when he first showed up on screen. They were like, we're getting a psychic in. And I was like, oh, great. I hope it's some, like, kooky little lady who's going to come in and say, this house is clear. Or whatever. And <laughs> clean. Whatever. And... <laughs> <laughs> very good <laughs> and, but it's not it's just some white guy and I, did, I didn't like that at first because it didn't have enough panache but then I was sort of like that's sort of probably what most psychics are like they're probably <laughs> yeah. just like random dudes yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. you know he, look, he looks like Patrick Wilson this guy uh, he hardly looks like Patrick Wilson <laughs> well I mean he's not handsome like Patrick Wilson yeah. but he's just like a generic white guy in that way you know what i'm saying <laughs> all right so i said mine who, who are you guys yeah so I, i'm gonna agree with you the psychic is my lvp as well and it, it's like and i know it's supposed to be like you know found footage but he was stumbling over a bunch of his lines but <laughs> he like, was i didn't notice that yeah um so and so it's like, I know it's supposed to, you're supposed to give it a lot of like leeway because it's not supposed to be rehearsed or anything like that. It's supposed to be found footage. But I just like everything about the character, just be, even before he showed up, I was like, yeah, okay, it's a psychic guy. It was kind of like what Henry was saying. But I just didn't think that he, he brought much to it. And uh, when he showed up again, he's suddenly just like, oh, no, I don't like this place. I got, I'm I got out of here, here, bro. I'm this is like, wild. A better actor could have made that like really scary, really yeah. chilling. Like, yeah. and, and you know what? Like, you you've convinced me. He's my LVP now. Yeah, so okay. we're all together. And then uh -huh. uh, my MVP has to be that that uh, beefcake uh, Mika. Like, there I, you I go. think I think he out of like. All or both of these movies, he's probably the most realistic char or believable character in the entire thing. I feel like I'm I would be acting just like him throughout the whole thing, like just yeah. Like, he's even he even comes across a little dickish, but in a realistic way. Oh yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Anyway, Mika, good call. My MVP, I'll go with uh, that CAA agent that was in the audience of that film festival. Discovered this <laughs> film all those years ago. All right, never would have made it out. Yeah, good for that CA agent, and fuck all the agents who never saw any three of us doing something important in public. Yeah, how, how does it never happen? Like, what, what, was, what was her name? The Florence and the Machine lady got discovered because she was, like, singing in a bathroom it. at a bar? Like, yeah, she, hey, she's weird looking, though. She's the kind <laughs> of girl, like, you'd see her drunk singing, you'd be like, I gotta figure out a way to make out with her. You yeah. know how I heard that um, what, uh, Johnny Depp was discovered? Is he was out in in L.A. Uh, with his band? I, I I forgot what it was called, like the Boys or the the, the something like that. The Pussy Posse. And um, he had no intentions of being an actor. He just happened to be at a fucking bar with and Nicolas Cage was next to him, and they started chatting. And Nicolas Cage was just like, "Hey, I think you'd be a pretty good actor. I'll, <laughs> I'll talk to someone." McConaughey got discovered in a bar, too. Apparently, they'd already cast Dazed and Confused, and they were just, like, out at a bar, the whole cast. And, like, he was just a local that started talking them up, and they thought he was funny. Really? <laughs> yeah. He, he, was, he was in acting school, like, so he did <laughs> want to be an actor, but, like, that's how he got discovered. Wow. Jesus Christ. Yeah. There's not a bar I haven't been in in the tri-state <laughs> area, in in New York City, in every borough, in Pennsylvania, in Ohio, even Cleveland. Hey, McConaughey's talking to everybody in the bar. You don't do that. You stay at the table oh. with your friends. Yeah, that's true. You know, that's what you got to do. Make a scene. You, you got to make yourself the main <laughs> character in that bar, like Florence. <laughs> Hear her singing in that bathroom. Who's yeah. that? Who's that songstress? Let's find <laughs> her. Doing coke in the bathroom. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Sounds like the dog days are over. All right. Hey, <laughs> Paranormal Activity 2 comes out one year later. All right. Mm -hmm. And you might think, like, maybe they were spending time, like, working on it because they made the movie in, like, 2006, the first one. But, yeah. I mean, they never knew it was going to come out. The thing came out that September. It was a surprise hit. And then they had to start working on this one. So I think they legitimately only had a year to make this movie. Probably. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, a lot of names involved. You know, they were like, all right, Oren Pelly, you've done your job. Go, We're sending you to the farm now. <laughs> That's kind of weird. There's a, shower, there's a shower there, Oren. I promise water comes out of it. Um, wow. Holocaust joke. 
Yeah, I'm, I'm in oh. it. Oh, no. <laughs> it took Aaron a second. <laughs> it took me a second. It's like, oh, okay. Don't you think that's weird, though, that they didn't have any faith in this guy at all? I think it's a, a little weird and, and, frankly, kind of anti-Semitic. You think that had something to do with it? Uh, I mean, I'm looking at the uh, names of the people involved in the second one. I'm seeing a Perry, a Landon, a Williams. <laughs> Gotcha. Yeah. yeah. Uh, all right. Spielberg's in his corner. I mean, what the fuck, man? Uh, he's tapped out by the second one. <laughs> Crazy. Working on war horses and such. I guess, yeah. 2010, he was probably working on Lincoln by now. That is true, and I'm glad he was. Great. Great film. Okay, so um, we've got a new team. Let's talk about it. The first draft of the script was written by a fellow named Michael R. Perry, um, who actually is associated with Oren Pelly because they co-created that River show together. Um, but, uh, you know, other than that, he's mostly written TV shit. Let's ignore him. Next. All right? <laughs> <laughs> it's rewritten. They've got this guy, Tom Pabst. You know, he's just a TV guy, too. We can ignore him. The big name here in the writing credits is this fellow Christopher Landon, who is now one of my favorite purveyors of modern horror movie. Got his start, mar- uh, horror movies, whatever. He got his start making uh, indie gay movies. He's one of those guys. You know, huh. in the 90s, there, were a lot, there was a big indie gay scene. Know what I'm talking yeah. about? I feel Not like really. every other indie movie would be a poster of like two shirtless guys <laughs> just hanging out. I think there was a South Park joke about that, how the film festivals are just... Uh, oh, gay, gay cowboys, cowboys eating, eating pudding. pudding. <laughs> yeah. that, and that joke was amazing because it predated Brokeback Mountain by like five years. Yeah. Yeah. I know why you like this guy, Dan. He uh, he wrote the old uh, Disturbia. Oh, well, I mean, all, <laughs> he did better than that. So he had written Disturbia by this point. That probably got him this gig writing uh, Paranormal Activity too. Um, but he like stuck around with this franchise. He's sort of like the uh, the regular guy, like that dude who writes all the Fast and Furious movies that I'm obsessed with. What's his name? Or one of the good? Oh, I don't know. But there's a guy. Who... Didn't one of the Friday the Thirteenth fellows always have his name on some part of them? No, no. You might be thinking of Mancini, Don Mancini, who's uh, he writes all the Child's yeah. plays. That's it. Uh, yeah, uh, but. This guy, Landon, he sticks around, writes two, three, four, and writes and directs the fifth one. Um, and that gives him a directing career. So he goes off and he does that movie, Scout's Guide to the Zombie Apocalypse, which is a real stupid title and not a great movie, but has its moments. <laughs> and uh, But then I really like that Happy Death Day, man. I never yeah. saw that. That was he, fun. Yeah, he wrote that. Second one, not I so didn't much. see the second one, so I can't. Well, he only directed the second one, so maybe he's a better writer than he is a director. Uh, yeah, um, the first first one was entertaining. I mean, you, I don't want You guys will probably get to it eventually because it's a franchise. Yeah, it says he directed the first one. Oh, he directed uh, the first one as well. Not yeah, and the second one. He directed both. Okay, so he's he's happy Death Day guy, and I saw that movie Freaky he did, which is sort of a horror body swap movie yeah. you saw that yeah 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 that with uh, vince vaughn switches bodies with a teen girl that's <laughs> that is freaky it yeah. sounds it sounds bad like if i if someone told me you should see this movie vince vaughn switches bodies with a teen girl i'd be like i'm not gonna watch that no but, i don't think so but it is good i enjoyed it yeah, shot shot too dark but what can you do you can't have everything um new director so it was originally going to be this fella, Kevin Grutert. Are you familiar with him? No, I don't know him. All right. He had directed Saw 6. Right? Oh, right. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. And that's who was going to make this movie. But the Saw movies were still going. And he had, in his contract with Universal, who makes the Saw movies, it was like, we get first choice. If we want you to make the next Saw movie, you have to do that. So he signed on to do Paranormal Activity 2, but then they were like, no, we want you to do Saw 7. So he had to leave the movie. And God. so the, they had to make a list of, uh, of possible directors. And 
Believe me when I tell you, it is a yeah. fucking fascinating list of directors. I saw that list. Yeah, read it out. Yeah. yeah who? All right. So, first of all on the list, I, this is pie in the sky, I guess. Brian De Palma. Yeah, right. What the fuck? <laughs> yeah. They were going to offer Brian De Palma. I, I hope they offered it to him, and, and he was just like, obviously no. <laughs> I'm... I'm Oh, why you ask? It's because uh, I'm Brian De Palma. Yeah, I uh, I have like what they call kind of a legendary uh, reputation. I, I'm also I have a style, and I don't really feel like directing the sequel to a found footage uh, horror film. Uh, not really my thing. Go lower though, you'll hit some. After that is uh, Werner Herzog, right? <laughs> <No>. <laughs> He'd have done it. I can see that. That would be fun. So Akiva Goldsman was considered. He's the fellow who wrote A Beautiful Mind, won an Oscar for that, also wrote Batman and Robin, did not win an Oscar for that. And, um, you know, he, he likes to put his fingers in pies. Yeah. You know, he always shows up in sequels. Like, uh, he liked the first season of that show, Fringe, and then all of a sudden he was writing in episodes in the second season. Huh. So, like, he was, uh, you know, he, anytime he's a fan of something, he just incorporates himself, and everybody's like, fucking, no thank you. Uh, so, <laughs> he was considered, thankfully, he does have an executive producer credit on this movie, but did not direct it. Um, another consideration was Brad Anderson, the fellow who did The Machinist and Session 9, who's in, would have been an interesting choice. Yeah, he would have been. You know, I, I like Brad Anderson. Yeah. I like Mika, those Mika those. Sloat could have lost 80 pounds for that role. <laughs> there you go. I, I like both those movies, Session 9 yeah. and them. But um, I, I, again, I, it's what an odd, the entire thing is so weird to, to look for a director who has directed quote unquote regular type movies for this. Like, I, I it's such an odd idea. Like, what they should I, I have done is just guys who direct horror TV. Like, just get some random guy who directs episodes of Supernatural or some shit. I bet they could do this. Yeah, or I say it again, you just go back with the guy who did it in the first place. I I know. Why was that not even considered? It doesn't doesn't seem like he was was ever even an idea in their heads that he would direct a second one. Makes no sense to me. I mean... Did he maybe have no interest in it? I couldn't find anything about his interest in even continuing. I, I this, searched so. for that information as well and could not find yeah. that. Mm-hmm. So maybe he didn't care. I don't know. Maybe he's like a fucking banker by day or something. Who fucking knows? He doesn't want to. Oh, you so. want a banker? That's your guess. Why did you guess that profession? Oh, <laughs> you know, because he's Jewish. That's why. Sounds like it. Uh, wow. So the other name uh, in consideration was Greg McLean, who uh, I love. He's the dude that did Wolf Creek and Rogue. He's a weird Australian guy. Yeah, yeah, he's wild. Aaron, you ever see Wolf Creek? A long time ago, and I think I enjoyed it. I, I remember enjoying it, but I don't remember anything about it. I dig that movie. They, they, you know, they made a sequel and a TV version of it. We gotta cover that what? someday. Yeah, I think it's only in Australia you can watch it. I feel like uh, I saw it a long, long time ago. Isn't it a bit torturey, porny? Oh yeah, but I'm not a torture porn guy, and this is probably the most I've ever liked a torture porny movie. Okay. I don't remember. I think it was more of a slasher, and it, 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 I, I. I it's more of a being... slasher, but the gore is pretty hardcore. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. All right, all right. So uh, we end up with this director, Todd Williams. He spells his name with one D. I question that, frankly, but uh, we'll accept it. Too. It's a terrible name to begin with, and it's even <laughs> one D. According to uh, his IMDb page, he's also known as Kip. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. He's definitely gone with Kip. Yeah, Kip Williams. Yeah, I guess yeah. that's what we. Wow, look at this! What an interesting trivia page. He's an undefeated amateur boxer. <laughs> oh, uh, I got more trivia. Listen for to you. this. Make- listen to this. He's currently married to Gretchen Mole, and yeah. used to be married to Famke Jansen. He's just huh. he's just going around fucking the entire cast of Rounders. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god! You know when I saw that, it didn't even occur to me that both those women were in that movie. That's crazy. Wow. That yeah, is the greatest wild. movie. Huh? 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, I uh, I got a spooky trivia for you that I just thought. How how we how spooky is this, guys? You ready for this? <laughs> I'm excited. Thank you. I need the music. Todd, T O D, in German, is Todd. Do you know what that means in German? Nazi. Death. Wow, death. Death Williams. Wow. Sort of like Doctor Death, Steve Williams, the old. Uh, Wrestler from the nineties. <laughs> All right. Moving on. Um, so, <laughs> so what? You want to talk about Todd Williams? What a no. weird choice this is, because you know I've seen one of his other movies, and it's just like a pretty straightforward adult drama. With I Jeff liked it. Bridges. The door, the door the floor. You gave it three. I gave it three. I remember liking it. It's, it's good. It's all right. It's one of those movies where it's like temptation is. Pulling a family apart. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's your boy who wrote it, the, that very boring writer, uh, John Irving, that people like. Why'd you call him my boy? I thought you really liked John Irving. I mean, I like World According to Garp, all right, but I'm not like a huge John Irving. Like, I'm, I'm not really into the cider house rules. No, 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 but I thought you really liked his literature. I, 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 I think I my know. dad does. You might be thinking of my father. Well, maybe I am. Yeah, I might have mentioned it on the show at some point. Anyway, he did that. Has he done anything else? I mean, who is this fucking guy? No, nothing. Nothing. <laughs> he can did, move he really. did a Stephen King adaptation called Cell. That was when that was that Stephen King book that he wrote right around the time cell phones were coming out. That's about like cell oh, phones start taking over the world. It's sort of like maximum overdrive, but cell phones, not trucks. Yeah. yeah. Sometimes I feel like if King would just wait three years after every newish type of thing, he'd do a lot better. Nah, but then he'd miss out on the on the trend. He wants to be on trend. Yeah, did you guys Did you guys read his book uh, or screenplay treatment for the uh, the movie Rower? Yeah, it's about TikTok taking over the world. <laughs> what? No, oh, no, it's it's about when they invented rowing machines, and 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 King wrote a book about a guy who buys a rowing machine at his house, and the rowing machine takes over and like traps him, and he can't get out of the rowing machine. Why is you that what you thought as a trend? Rowing machine, like what made you think of rowing machines just now in in that joke? Well, first of all, it's not a joke; it's an actual book. And it's not an actual book. Stop it. Second of all, uh, I have no idea. I just, I just remember when rowing machines came out and everybody was like, it's the best thing. It's the best workout you're ever going to have. Get the rower. And then I can take it over by the Nordic track. Oh, the Nordic track. The Nordic remember track was a big parents, deal. I feel like every one of my friend's parents had one in the living room. Yep. Nobody ever used it. I the would, though. I, I would. Every time I went to a friend's house and their parents had a Nordic track, I would lock yeah. in. I would get on those wooden planks and start shuffling back and forth, baby. It's exciting. The Stairmaster. Remember that? Sure. The Thighmaster was another one. Thigh exercise equipment used to be very popular. My mom owned a, an exercise VHS called In Shape with Rachel McClish, and uh-huh. uh, she, would, um, she would lift like five-pound weights all the time and watch that tape. That's adorable. <laughs> Yeah, and you know what? My mom is like seventy years old or something. Not not quite. I don't want to age her. She's sixty seven, sixty eight, ripped, sixty eight. And I gotta say, in great shape, in great shape. You know, she stayed. Rachel McLish did her well. She stayed in shape, with or without Rachel. Very fit person, no doubt. Yeah, yeah. I remember in college. One of my friends got drunk and wanted to bone my mom. I don't know that my mom ever knew that story. She might be listening right now, hearing that for the first time, wondering which friend was it and would I have boned them if I knew? Let's what? Let's hope she's not listening to that. She's probably li- what's the big deal? It's a compliment. It was a mere fifteen years ago, and uh, <laughs> some guy wanted to fuck her. Has got it going on. <laughs> <She> t- <laughs> hey, Adam Schlesinger. He wrote That Thing You Do, the song. Oh, he wrote both Stacy's Mom and That Thing You Do. How could you beat that? Oof. Wait, did He's he? Who- was it Bowling for Soup or Fountains of Wayne that did Stacy's Mom? 
Fountains of Fountains fucking Wayne. Wayne. Then it was Schlesinger. He's the Fountains yeah. of Wayne guy. He's the one who passed away, right? Yeah, of COVID. Of COVID yeah. Uh, poor, poor guy. I was, uh, you know, I like some of those early Fountains of Wayne albums back when they yeah. were more grungy and shit. It's fun. It's fun. All right, Henry. This film, Paranormal Activity 2, won a Teen Choice Award. Oh, fuck. You don't need to play it again. It's fine. It's a Teen, teen <laughs> Choice, Choice Award. <laughs> yeah, that's a good approximation. Yeah, I was. I had them all up, and you immediately went into the movie description of the... So I just I went, got, all right, I, I got, got your back. I, I, I Thanks, know bro. I'll get your back. Thanks, well, bro. you know, the teens were the only one to notice this movie because... While the box office was still good, the critics had turned. You know, I, I saw that Ebert gave Paranormal Activity 1 <laughs> three and a half stars and Paranormal Activity 2 one and a half stars. Like, I was there that, that significant a difference between no, these two no, movies? I, yeah, I agree. I, that was, I, I didn't bother to read that review, and I do generally with him, but I was just like, uh, okay, Ebes, I don't know what, what's... Who cares? What's uh, the maybe between movies, they took his jaw out. He was not as in a good mood. Uh, I knew you were going to say that. Yeah. Why do you think I was going to say that? Uh, it's been a while since you've made an Ebert jaw removal joke. But it was so. around this time, right? I'm not I'm not but, trying to be an asshole. That just happens. Have to try. <laughs> yeah, right, right, yeah. No, it just happened, yeah. yeah. I, you know, You're right. It was when it happened to him. Yeah. Yeah, and then all his reviews were like... He was giving that thumbs up all the time. Well, ugh. Those last oh. few years of Ebert's life, oh. I don't like thinking about. It's like uh, <laughs> it's sort of like late Michael Jackson. Like the second he died, like he went back to the original version. <laughs> he grew his jaw back in my mind the second he passed away. What? Fuck that guy, I said. Ebert or Michael Jackson? Uh, Michael Jackson. Oh, okay, good. Uh, this film... <laughs> Uh, came out October 22nd, 2010, on a budget of $3 million, and it made $177.5 million worldwide. It was number 40 at the box office in America between Percy Jackson and the Olympians, colon, the lightning thief. Wow. Uh-huh. And uh, Tony Scott's uh, final film, Unstoppable. An excellent oh, runaway train film starring Denzel Washington and a pre uh, Wonder Woman and Star Trek Chris Pine. Post Star Trek. Oh, it is post Star Trek. You're right. Chris Pine. Yeah, yeah, this was like uh, in the days right after Star Trek, where Hollywood was sort of flirting with Chris Pine. Like, are you a movie star or are you just Captain Kirk? I'm not sure yet. Hey, he's a fucking great Captain Kirk. I like him a lot. Yeah, you know, and. Uh, what is he doing now? He's in those Wonder Woman movies. Yeah, he's fine. He's good enough. Mm. You saw the second one? I loved it. You loved the second you Wonder loved Woman? the second Wonder Woman? You both know that, or Aaron might not know that. Dan, you know this. I think I, I forgot. You know, everyone hates it. I think it's totally fun. I, I did not like the villain. That was a what about how, like, a hundred years later, the strongest woman in the world is still pining after the one guy she made out with, and um, her only wish for the world, uh, which she claims to care about, is uh, to bring that guy back and fuck a stranger who has his face on. <laughs> you're okay with all of that? Everything I mentioned, you're okay with all of that? So Cap is still in love with uh, Peggy Carter all those years. That's that's a thousand years later. You it's know. not a thousand years later, and also he was under ice for decades of that time. Excuses. Well, it's not excuses. Wonder Woman has been living in the the mortal world as a regular woman for a century at this point, and she still cannot shut up about Chris Pine. So that's not plus, true. plus Captain America. It is rape of a woman uh, masquerading as his dead wife. That's a great point. Captain America uh, never sexually molested a stranger who resembled the woman he loved. No, he just wanted to fuck her niece. So I don't know how that goes. Hey, listen, could you blame him? <laughs> no, I can't at all. Uh, yeah, I like that. I, I thought the Wishmaster. I loved seeing Wishmaster again pop up in a movie. That was very fun. <laughs> Wonder uh, Woman. <laughs> <laughs> you have three wishes. 
Louise. <laughs> I have one wish <laughs> that is to change the ending of the Mandalorians. Why? Why does he want to change that? He doesn't like um, bringing back old actors. I don't need to see Luke's. <laughs> <laughs> Again, already done in Force Awakens. You have two wishes, and one of them better be to make more stuff out of the Star Wars extended universe. Ooh! <laughs> All right. <laughs> I have other movies to make. I don't need the Mandalorian wishes. Less Luke, more Ahsoka. All right. <laughs> I love that actor, though. What's his name? Rosario Dawson. No, uh, no. Mark Hamill. No. Andrew Divoff. <laughs> Who are you thinking of? <laughs> oh, Pe- Pedro Pascal from uh, Pedro. Wonder Woman 2. I forgot about that. He's the villain. <laughs> what? Right. It's the Joe Hinge on that. Yeah, yes, yes. I know. I, I just got so invested in the gin, of course. Yeah. I get it. Believe yeah. me, he can do that to you. It's one of his wee shots. <laughs> I once had to go to rehab for being too into the gin. Uh... <laughs> what are you here for? I'm into the gin. Well, a lot of people have their own. Any other liquor? Just No, just the gin. Just that. Yeah. All right. Just wish... Go away. Paranormal Activity 2. Watch it on Stars, not on Paramount Plus. That's oh, great. I paid three bucks twice for it to <laughs> right? watch it on, on Amazon through Stars. Yeah. All right. So this movie takes place like a month earlier. It starts September 18th. Oh, no, no. That's the first one. This one starts uh, August 7th, 2006. So it's like a little over a month before the first one starts. Um, I didn't even catch that until the like. Well, I mean, until obviously when things are happening, but when it first started off, I didn't even realize that it was right. A when, curse or... when I f- watched it the first time, I don't think I understood it until like Katie shows up again late in the movie and they start talking about being sisters. Because, you know, it, it helped like I watching it that. back to back like this. Because in the first yes. movie, there's that whole. She has like this whole monologue about how when they were kids, like. It, her sister never interacted with the demon, but could see it at the foot of her bed. Uh, it, was, it was always she, at the foot of her bed. So I, that was a big question for me in this movie: is why is the demon first going for the sister when clearly the one he cared more about when they were kids was the old was Angela? You wait, what's her fucking name? Because it's Katie in the first one. It's not. Angela oh, I'm sorry. I keep saying Angela for some reason. It's, I don't it's Katie. It. I don't remember. It's Katie. It's it. They use their real names. Yeah. Oh no no, Christy in the second movie, the girl, the sister. Her yeah. sister, Katie's sister, is named Christy. 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 Yeah. Okay. Christy. Nobody's said that. You gonna be yet. okay That's with that? That's why I'm asking. All right. Well, it's, the actor's name is. We have actual actors in this movie, unlike the last movie. Oh, oh really? You fooled me. Yeah. Mm-hmm. This is Sprague Graydon. And I've seen her in like a million things, and I, I couldn't, yeah. I couldn't picture her from anything. But yeah, she's been in like a thousand TV shows I've watched, including recently. Huh. Really? Yeah. So what? You had an issue with this girl? No, no. I just, you know, the acting isn't any better in the first one. I thought it, the acting was a market improvement on the first one. Really? Yeah, really? yeah. I didn't, I didn't feel that. I, I thought even the husband. I, I said I didn't mind Mika in the first one, but I thought the husband in this movie was like a thousand times better. <laughs> I, I liked him. I liked this <laughs> this movie. He 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 was to me a little bit more believable. Uh, maybe because he's a little more sympathetic. Yeah, mm-hmm. the actor who the, that actor's name is Brian Boland. He of course uh, penciled the Killing Joke in the eighties, and uh, here he is again acting in Paranormal Activity too. I, I'm sorry. I'm just taking notes on how fucking angry I am that you made the first Brian <laughs> joke before I did. I thought it was last night. I was in my room. I was like, I'm going to make a Brian Ballin joke. I'm going to beat Dan to it. I lost. Yeah. yeah. I, I didn't even catch that until uh, it took me a second to put that together. But 
Nice one, Dave. Yeah. yeah. Dave, we've yeah. also got a daughter involved in this movie. You know, Daniel was getting bored, so we needed to add a hot teen for the sequel. Mm-hmm. Uh, and here she is, Molly Ephraim. So we'll go with that. Hey, she's my yeah, age. She's good. My she's age. good. She's I've one of the her. kids in um in in uh, Last Man Standing with uh, Tim Allen. <laughs> That's not how I know her. <laughs> That's where I recognize her from. <laughs> <laughs> what do you know her from, Henry? Uh, I gotta see. I'm pulling it down for a second. Hey, she's what, in what? five episodes of Halt and Catch Fire. I can't place her, but I've definitely seen that. Um, I saw and the front runner with Hugh Jackman. Oh, I saw that too. It was pretty boring. And then uh, she's also in that Perry Mason now too. Yes, I've seen her in. A, so it's really just TV that I've seen her in. Yeah, yeah. I would argue <laughs> the people you want to hire for Paranormal Activity movies are TV actors. Yeah, that's probably sure. the way to go. Sure. I um, think uh, this this movie already does a good job of at least like raising the stakes of the the first film by introducing a daughter, a baby, and a dog. So, well, it's a prequel, so isn't it true that we're lowering the stakes in the first one? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know that could be the way to look at it. Except this one directly has consequences, very directly. Like, you could say, if you're being real uh, literal about it, that there is no first movie without this movie. Well, they overlap at a certain point. They start crossing over into each other's timelines. There is no... It's sort of like that, like, Tokyo Drift shit in Fast and Furious. This is a complicated (laughs) franchise. All right. I mean, I I, I was ready for this one on a rewatch because I reread... I just read a brief synopsis about, oh, okay, this is where we are. I don't like going into movies like this where I know there's a continuity fuck up all the time uh and i i want to know where we are so it, it helped and when i started the movie i knew where the fuck i was i didn't want to spend the first 20 minutes of the movie no but you know you, you like i feel like one if you've watched the first one recently enough you can jump right into this movie but i had the same reaction as aaron the first time i saw this movie where it, it was literally like over an hour into the movie before like I got my bearings. And, I, and oh, to me, it was like a twist. It was like, oh, my God. Wow. It's so connected to the first one. Oh, me, me, too. Absolutely. Because I rented the I rented. I saw all these kind of all, everything after one. I saw them all sort of in a bunch. They were I think they were all like on TV or whatever. So I was just like watching them one after another, um, except for the marked ones, which I saw in movie theaters. Well, that marked ones, we'll talk about it next week, but it was made specifically because... Yeah, what? Yeah. We will not be talking about it next week. That's uh, five, six, and seven. Right. Yeah. Fucking whatever. But we'll talk about it in two weeks. And that oh, one not- was made specifically because they realized that the Paranormal Activity movies had a really high la- Latino audience. Yeah. And so they wanted to make a paranormal activity movie that like was specifically for Latino audiences. Like they spe- they said in like the trades before that movie came out that they weren't like they weren't looking to equal the box office of the previous movies. They were expecting lower box office, but sure. it was because they were aiming at this specific audience. It was almost like an experiment by the studio. It was um, weird. Um well, I would see it. But now we just make movies for everybody. Like it's so weird. Like the mindset of studios. Like if Crazy Rich Asians got made around that time, it would have just been like, well, it's only for Asian people. Ameri- you know, white people are not going to want to see this movie. That's just a generic romantic comedy that just happens to have Asian people. Yeah, th- there's a funny thing where it almost is a. It, it's trying to be enlightened that type of thought, but it's almost completely the opposite. It's almost totally condescending. Well, it, it's, it's it's trying to be enlightened, but also the only impulse is money so Uh like but it's just like it's funny it's like so latino people really dug the first four paranormal activities movies they happen to star white people they still like them they were going to see the movies it's like they like them so much maybe they'll like Maybe they'll like it if we just cast Latino actors. Why didn't they just <laughs> cast Latino actors in like normal roles though? Like in that movie, it's all about like the marked ones. It's like a race of ghosts from remember. Mexico. I don't fuck for what it's about. Yeah. I, I mean, I didn't see it, but I remember reading about it. I, I I don't know. It was an odd decision at the time. Like you know the 
the, the first Mexican character in this franchise is the maid in the second mm-hmm. one. Is it, like, what did they think? Like, the, the audience for these movies? Like, we want a Paranormal Activity movie that's just the maid. Like, a <laughs> bunch of maids. If you do include a Latino character, can you please give an occupation that um, we can all relate to, and that would be maid. Thank you. You know what? She was beloved in the household, though. She was beloved in the household, even though she gets fucking fired, too. Pretty unceremoniously, too. The dad is just like, bro, you're Ah. burning sage in my house. Get out of here. Meanwhile, like, what? That's going to stink shit up for like a half hour. It's fine. It's a nice little ceremony she's doing. Sage is a lovely smell. Yeah, Mm -hmm. Uh, I light sage in my house sometimes. You can light sage anytime you want to, Martine. Um... Second of all, I don't know that she's Mexican. I have no idea what her uh, Latino designation oh, is. Oh, I think or... I assume that because of the marked ones, but I could be wrong on that. Like it's because you're stereotyping. Um, but the yeah, that's uh... fine. That, that's <laughs> fine. I, I guess I guess I'll quit the podcast and just go work in a bank. <laughs> <laughs> Aaron, Aaron, save us. Yeah, Aaron, well, excuse me, I gotta go go get the pizzas out of my oven. <laughs> so, yeah, that's why I figured, because he had a credit card to make the movie. Mm. Um, all right, so uh, the, the, w- let's set it up. There, uh, spooky shit's going down in this new environment now, with the whole family involved. And uh, what what happens? What are some of the great well, spooky this moments? Is, this is something that like we were talking about how the other other ghost took its time like ramping up stuff, but this this ghost also a, a little bit of a troublemaker, you know, a little trickster. <laughs> but he blows his wad way too soon. He like wrecks the house like right off, pretty much right off the bat, which forces them to get the cameras. Which I do like how they they create a new device in which two have right. video cameras running so it's like yeah. i'll applaud them for that uh but it's like they they come in and like the house is already like trashed by the ghost yeah i, I would think you'd want to like kind of like you know he obviously needs to do something big enough to warrant them getting a whole security system why but, does he um, want them to get a security system why does he want to just do this under wraps See, I think he blows his wad right there, and then he has to do a quick course correction, the ghost. He's mm-hmm. like, I gotta slow shit down, I'll mess <laughs> up breakfast or something, like, it'll be fine. And and then it's not until he opens up all the cabinets in the kitchen that mm-hmm. that he really starts to go forward. He, like, that's the moment where he's like, alright, I've, I've sufficiently built myself back up into a threat. And uh, I'm gonna open all up all these cabinets now. And <laughs> yeah. The other thing is, is you gotta remember that if it's you know being a demon, as demons are, and as they as they can be, he's millennia years old, and so he doesn't know the necessarily the technological advancements that we have. You think so that he might he's not a millennia be, old? He's a, a millen- He's it's a several millennia old. You think and, all demons existed like at the beginning of time in Bible times? They're not like reproducing down there? I don't think they can reproduce from what I would I've think read. this demon in the paranormal activity movies, it's he's like new. an ancestor of Bible demons. So mm-hmm. he's like a younger demon. He's like in his 30s. Yeah. Yeah, I, yeah, I mean he's getting his his bearings. I mean like uh older demons <laughs> you think would be like time. Would be doing like scarier shit, like you know, causing you know, yeah. possessing people, causing their heads to spin around and he's, walk backwards yeah. upstairs. He's, he's knocking guy, keys like, over. He's just My, knocking some stuff around. Like he's he's, get, he's he's still learning. He's in training. It's like in Beetlejuice when Gina Davis and Alec Baldwin at the beginning, all they know how to do is like put sheets on and go ooh, and then mm-hmm. it's not until they uh, draw that door on the wall and uh, go into the afterlife and and learn how to uh, you know stretch their faces into contortions. Correct. So either well, way, it's like I, a spinoff of Beetlejuice in a way. That's right. I never thought of it. Huh. It would have been great if. Um, if Mika just point. like found the handbook to the recently deceased in the attic, <laughs> Henry, you want to finish? Go talk, Henry. Thanks, thanks so much. Um, it doesn't matter; the joke's dead now. Uh, oh anyway, was, God! Man, if, demon, I... no, if it's an old demon, he wouldn't understand the technological advancements of cameras being placed in a stationary place in the house. If it's a young demon, he's inexperienced, like you guys said. 
So he also doesn't understand the camera thing. So that is my explanation for why he may have prematurely ejaculated his demon juice and not and not been ready uh, for such a scare scary time. <laughs> for such a scary time. Uh, all right. You just, you just bailed hard at the end of that. I love it. that. Yeah. I love when you can tell Henry's <laughs> given up on a thought halfway through. I, I give. Yeah. All right. So um, these, what's happening? This teen, she's babysitting a lot. They're going out on the town, and uh, the wife is getting possessed. Somebody else do the plot for this one. <laughs> the what? The what? The uh, they have a nice waspy family with a waspy son named Hunter. Yeah, and did you did any of you guys notice the yeah. um, the little letters on his door when they were yeah. like going through the house? They were rearranged and said haunted. No, really? Yeah, it's just like said letters. That's insane. That's hilarious. <laughs> haunted. I I thought it was just missing an R. And it, it was. Haunted. I know what you're talking about. When when oh. when he first messes up the house, they're saying yeah. nothing went missing. But I noticed there was an R missing from his name on the yeah. door. So I was like, wow, the, they stole nothing but an R. No, I th- I think it says haunt, but with like. E at the end. I could be wrong. I I I, I think I, I saw that, but I I I'm hoping that I'm right. Listeners, let me know if watch I'm right. The again, and then check for us. Okay, watch the whole thing again. For hey us, Henry, right? can you can you rent it one more time? <laughs> <laughs> I want to spend nine dollars on it uh, as opposed to twelve. Uh-huh. Well, how do you not and just then, own these movies? I don't want to own all these. I got the first one for free, and uh, I didn't need the other ones. Yeah. I feel like you love and these movies. You've been like pushing these on me since we started this podcast. I think they're good for the show in that there's like a good quality. They're at least like they stay at like a steady, a steady cruising altitude. You're kidding me? Aaron was two- considering a one. Well, I didn't expect that. <laughs> you didn't either. No, yeah. I wasn't. Yeah. yeah. All right. What what else happens in this movie? Uh, I think the first jump scare is when the daughter screams because uh, she f- finds uh, an unflushed toilet with some shit in it. So. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> yeah, she's like, ew, fucking Martine. And what a bitch. Just like blaming the maid. <laughs> Come on. I, I, I missed that part. <laughs> oh, my. Oh, she uh, literally says mom. that. She's like, Martine left a real stinker in here. <laughs> And the parents oh. are like, "What? I bet it's you." And she's like, "Ew, no." Well, oh, you know what happened was they 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 took Martina aside and said, "This is strike one." <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Or for the sounds, it was strike number two. Listen, yeah. I don't know. Yeah, if the they the dad was like, "It's Mexico, <laughs> but it's strike one." And if they got soccer, you didn't score goal, Martine. No shitting where the the help shits in the basement. Listen, Martine, stop shitting upstairs. This is strike numero dos. Let's not make a trace, baby. <laughs> and then the sage, the burning sage, was strike three. So uh, I guess to move the plot along, uh, yeah. It's, Spooky stuff starts happening, and it's all the same sort of stuff where doors are slamming. I think a pot falls off, keeps falling down. It's like an episode of Frasier, just doors slamming. (laughs) Yeah. And then so so what happened in this house is a German Shepherd. uh, Those dogs always make me nervous. Uh, Why? German Shepherd. They're they're anti-Semitic dogs. Oh, yeah, that's Uh, fair. I thought this dog was pretty sweet, though. I liked it. Yeah, I thought this one was a good girl. So yeah, but no, maybe he didn't like Mika Sloat whenever he walked in. I don't know. <laughs> you know why I'd be a little put off by this guy? He's brash. <laughs> Mika comes yeah. in, he he runs the room. Well, I'm just trying to live know. my life over here. Well, I can't take some dogs. Anyway, um, the dog's nervous the whole movie. Uh, the baby's annoying. I will say that. I don't like hearing babies What? Cry. That is a cute baby. Sure, but he's annoying. I don't want to hear him cry. He doesn't cry that much. Eh, I feel like he's mostly scene, just being little... cute. Eh, he's, uh, yeah. When's yeah. he annoying, Aaron? Uh, it, there's a towards the end. It's crying a lot, and I I know it's supposed to be building more tension and stuff. But I'm 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 with Henry on this one. Like it, babies, 
cry our baby crying cuts through me like a dentist drill you want yeah, him, me too. you want him to be scared but silent sort of like baby oscar in ghostbusters 2 exactly now that was a good baby <laughs> what an ugly baby though come on you <laughs> traded in this one you, you you yes he's screaming but he's way cuter Oscar it was an ugly baby. Uh, God bless you, Oscar. I guess you're 30 years old Such now. Such a or... fucking ugly baby, dude. I bet that kid's a mongoloid now. Oscar, <laughs> baby Oscar, he was in. He was at January 6th. I'm telling you. <laughs> it probably was. He probably grew up to be the guy with the horns. <laughs> yeah, he's that guy. He's yeah. He's the Q Viking, baby Oscar. <laughs> <laughs> this is in uh, QAnon, this famous man with the antelope hair. It was turned out to be the star of Ghostbusters 2, Baby Oscar. Oh, Grew up to be a QAnon representative, star in the Capitol. Yeah. Baby Oscar. God, people have been making fun of me my whole life because of a, a, a role I had when I was a baby. Now they're going to finally take me seriously when I storm the Capitol in this awesome buffalo hat listen Just listen I, i'm very vulnerable to cults of personality first it was vigo <laughs> and now it's trump all right uh, yeah. and second i'm also suing nirvana yeah. <laughs> oh he's that kid too god damn it what a life all right uh <laughs> all right what happens next in this fucking movie oh, yeah. over here so then, then yeah, like we said, uh, poor Martine, like she gets spooked, and so she starts doing some Santeria stuff with like the sage. <laughs> Which, by the way, Dan, now, now do you, I'm, do you I'm practice Santeria. I'm very different from Martine in that I don't practice Santeria. I don't got a crystal ball. You know, <laughs> <laughs> you know <laughs> my, my, uh, if my daddy, what is the next line? <laughs> I had a million dollars. I'd but... spend it all. Yeah. <laughs> I'd spend it all. Uh, and so anyways, uh, the parents get spooked out with her, with that, and so they fire her, which like that's what leads me to believe the shit in the toilet must have been one of the strikes. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think it was ghost shit? Do you think that was not shit after Ooh. all? It was ectoplasm. Ooh. Demon Fame Hooper. shit. What? Demon shit. Yeah. <laughs> I wish to scream the Mexicano maid by sitting <laughs> in the toilet. I don't know. That's a little, I don't see the gin being that racist. <laughs> <laughs> I am offended by your contemptible views on the Latin X movement. <laughs> what are I your mean? pronouns? <laughs> I am not a jinn who is he. I am they, them. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Jin Jen. Okay. Um. <laughs> oh, the gift that keeps on giving. Yeah. Uh, all right. Uh, what happens next? Uh, one thing that, it, so throughout the movie, it, it keeps on flashing out to, like, showing shots of their pool and the, the um, pool cleaner. They have, like, a little robotic oh, yeah. pool cleaner. We got to see around. Katie Featherton at the pool in a, in a bathing suit. Did you lose your mind, Henry? It's fine. Yeah. Mm. All right. <laughs> but one thing, it's like, I, I was kind of bummed out. There was no, no what? real payoff. Sorry. No, no, you go, Aaron. Uh, there was no real payoff for the pool. I thought there was going to be something like something spooky happening. I thought someone was going to get like drowned by the pool machine or something like that. Would be there was that yeah. one moment, that weird moment where the dad takes them all to the backyard to like show That's them funny. the pool like cleaner that. jumping out of the pool. I actually thought that was very funny because I didn't know. Like, I expected something to happen, but I was like, that's very fucked up that he did that. But it was a very natural asshole dad thing to do, and he makes it jump, like, six feet out of the water. I, I don't know. I, it was is funny. that what was going on in that scene? I, I... He programmed it to, like, jump oh, out of the water okay. like when he hit the button. Yeah. Oh, yeah. By, the, by the way, uh, I won't go too much into it, but I did. I did. I noticed on Amazon. Uh, I almost said dot com. Of course you know what Amazon is. W W H T T P colon slash slash www dot Amazon dot com. You wanna check this website out, gang. You could buy so much on there. 
I, I first checked there to see if this is available to, to, to stream for free there, but they did, however, have to stream for free 30 nights of paranormal activity activity with the devil inside the girl with the dragon tattoo mm, mm. which is a parody one of those really really fucking oh. bargain bin oh. yeah bottom of the barrel like parody. how many of those can you name off the top of your head superhero movie no 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 i i understand that but i'm talking about like these it. ones where they like include a million titles in the title oh that's um, like a weird trope isn't yeah. it 40 year old virgin who loses his dick to the weather it was like, like it was like the 40 year old who virgin knocked up sarah marshall and and felt, felt super, super bad, bad about it. it oh my god there you go those are generally i've noticed also made by right wingers there was another one um when i was when i was a kid like right after uh the horror boom happened in the late 90s that was called scream if you know what i did last friday the 13th yeah. Nice. Mm-hmm. Nice. But that uh, one's very good. I believe Tiffany Amber Thiessen was the star of that movie. Yeah, they always got like a star. Like, and when I say star, I mean like someone who <laughs> was a star at one. And point. when you say a star, you don't mean a list star. You mean one star. One star. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Um, but uh, I, I I scroll I just scrubbed through it because the movie was it was. It was as bad as you can imagine. the The first shot of the movie was um, uh, a Skittles commercial where a guy is fucking his wife and ejaculates Skittles on her face. Amazing. That's the yeah, it's pretty amazing. How do you but, do uh, that? <laughs> but the the anyways uh, the the thing that uh, I was gonna make a, a comment about is they actually utilize the pool cleaner in that. Um, so instead of it being um, a, a little. Uh, an older Latino lady being the maid. They have a uh, ex- extremely offensive gay stereotype Latino right. uh, guy as it. And there's a scene where he's fucking the pool cleaner. So who'd they get to play right. that part? Fluffy. <laughs> <laughs> hey, the old me Oh um, God. Yeah. The um. Uh, what? What do you got, Henry? How you follow that up? No, I, I actually had a previous thought before you screwed me up with Fluffy. That was really good. Uh, <laughs> he's George funny, Lopez. man. That guy's funny. Fluffy? I know. God. <laughs> Anyone who said, like, that he's guy, almost as good as look, Jeff Dunham. Almost. They'll always say it the same way. It's just like, he's funny, man. Funny, man. Yeah. Just like the people who saw Money Monster in front of me. <laughs> the people, the people that like Fluffy, love Kevin Hart too. Like I guarantee you, it's the, uh-huh. it's the same audience. Yeah, but don't put Kevin Hart quite with Fluffy and 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 Jeff Dunham. Well, no, of course not. Kevin Hart's definitely a better stand-up. I, I'm just talking about the audience. Yeah, yeah, generic. Yeah, people who love. Uh, it's probably the same audience the as Dane Cook, right? Like back in yeah, the day. Yeah. Mm. Or who's that guy who the comedian who always stole everyone's jokes? Uh, Rob, Robin Williams. <laughs> no, I forgot this name. Either way, <laughs> <Leto>, moving on. <laughs> moving on. Who stole together. everybody's jokes? I mean, Dan Cook did. Mencia. Mencia. Oh, of course, the mind oh. of Mencia. Yeah, he was never in. He was always in someone's mind. He really did. Him. Holy That's shit! Right. That fucking. That Mark Maron episode with Carlos Mencia, legendary. One of the great podcasts ever released. I don't think I've ever heard that one. <laughs> Amazing. Heard- he really, he doesn't hold back. It is, it is a delight. They really, wow. and, and then Mencia leaves the interview and comes back for another interview to clarify things, and it goes no better, and it's amazing. <laughs> yeah. And Marin ain't usually very confrontational. He, but I guess he, he was. Just... He was. The thing is, Marin has developed a level of fame from the podcast, so he's a little more careful with it now. But at the beginning Hello, yeah. of the podcast, when he had guys like Dane Cook or, or Mencia or even Robin Williams on, he like would would ask the hard questions. Ooh. Yeah. Is that yeah. what's gonna happen to us when we get famous? Are we gonna get real mellow and like, at, you know, be nicer people? Mm-hmm. The problem with us is we'll never get famous, and we'll we'll just get more and more mean and miserable and shitty. All right. <laughs> yeah. More obscure than we are now. Yeah. 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 I yeah. Like I, if anything, oh. we'll peak at some point and start losing listeners. I expect that to happen any day now. 
you guys just better pray that you don't get famous. I mean, like you're gonna get get canceled so oh, fast if you ever do. <laughs> we're done. We'll have to either that or just eliminate all episodes that have ever existed from the planet somehow, which I don't think you can do, and then just start from scratch. I would you know, sacrifice of- my utter anonymity for cancellation. <laughs> I could just see you guys blow up, get famous, and then uh, Elvis Fan 1 fucking murders you. <laughs> Boy, I gotta say, Elvis Fan 1 really stuck with it. He, he never came back. Dedicated. Yeah, Elvis yeah. King. Yeah. Right, yeah. right. Elvis Dead. King 1. We're back to him. Yeah. By the way, I, I'm a fan of the podcast. I'm up to date with all the, all, you, you all are. the controversies. You, yeah. you know, Elvis, not enough Elvis in this movie. If we're talking about. Um, you know, psychic charlatans trying to help uh, possessed people. I- I'll take Patrick Wilson performing uh, some some classic Elvis songs. Uh, a joke stolen from your own Letterboxd review, but I liked it on Isn't there. Isn't that okay? Like That's okay, right? Yeah. I used to not yeah. do that, and then I realized, like, how many people follow me on Letterboxd? Probably way more people <laughs> listen to the podcast, so I'll, I'll just say it here. It was a good joke. So, it's like an know, Easter egg. Be- For the listeners that follow me on Letterboxd, it's like, oh, he stole that one. That's right. Exactly. Yeah. So I won't point them out anymore. You yeah. can if we'll you let want, them Henry. Discover. I feel like, are you, like, angry at me? Sometimes if uh, if I've given it to you too much in a podcast, you'll give it back in a way like that. He's giving me what? Uh, you know, just give it to you. Give it, give you the the meat. Oh, a hard time or yeah, something? Yeah, yeah. Oh, no, uh, no, never. I would, I, I've never once retaliated uh, against you. That is um, not true never... at all. You you are a retaliator. <laughs> no, I am. Uh, no, 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 but I like, I, I've given you accolades on your reviews on this show all the time. I'm the main guy that does that. Your letterbox reviews are fucking brilliant. I love them. I, I honestly think it's the thing in the world I'm best at. Hmm. You're I, very you're good compared to letterbox reviews. I suck at everything. <laughs> no, no, that's not true. That's not true. That's not true. Uh, but your letterbox reviews are very funny. They're very very good. Thank yeah. you, Henry. Everybody, follow me on Letterbox and follow Henry on Letterbox <laughs> at Hank Beast. Follow me at Hank Beast. It says my super fan X Men account, uh, <laughs> and also I don't write reviews, so mine are funny too. They're just ratings. They are funny because you'll see him review some random horror movie four stars, and you'll be like, what? Henry, what are you doing? <laughs> uh, so uh, this movie, how does it wrap up? The, the, so they get rid of the ghost for a while, and it comes back, right? Yeah, I feel like the, the, the maid does that little thing, and it get does it get rid of it for a couple of days? Do they have a little lapse or not really? I think really? there's a reprieve. I didn't really yes. notice it, but I thought it was funny that, like, as soon as, like, they, they start suspecting, like, oh, it might actually be a ghost, they bring the maid back. They're like, she's obviously right. knows what she's doing. You don't think they would look into, like, you don't think it'd be a little awkward at that point? Like, I, I feel yeah. like they, they would probably call up ghost chasers or something like that. Uh, yeah. They had, to have, given her, they had to have given her a big raise, right? Like, I imagine he, this is how it I went. So. Like, they were like, listen... Martine, the fact of the matter is you were right. There's absolutely... We are riddled with ghosts over here. It's fucked up. <laughs> so, like, obviously you were wrongly terminated by us. Um, we right. are willing to uh, pay the price for this. And uh, we want to bring you back on uh, at $16 an hour, which is $1 more than you were making previously. And... Um, <laughs> <laughs> so uh, please return. And she was like, and "Also, you're all, uh, you're also on exorcism duty now." <laughs> yeah, we're mostly hiring you back as an exorcist, not so much as a maid. You will be cleaning now, the house, but of ghosts. And, oh, and by the way, and remember, you can't use the upstairs bathroom anymore. <laughs> <laughs> that didn't change. That didn't change. And one more caveat: if Governor Schwarzenegger. Once fuck you, you do have to fuck him in our house because he likes uh, maids of color. That's just the American Henry rule with the for current maids. Digs, the, the, the current news, right? Is that new? Well, that Net- is that Wasn't new that that Netflix? Year, like, right uh, yeah, probably. Hey, is that new Netflix show made about Martine? Is it perhaps That'd be great. a Paranormal <laughs> Activity spinoff? I just, Martine was the luckiest one in this house, man. She's lucky she got the fuck out. She's the only one who didn't uh, get axed. 
She didn't die, Martine? She survives this? So. Is she in the marked ones? Oh, I don't remember. Oh, uh, pro- Yes, I actually- She uh, fucking started. is! We see Martine again?! I think it mentions her appearing in the in the in that in something I read. Yeah, yeah. Because I, 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 by the way, I did really like uh, the basement sequence. I thought that was re- was quite good, and I, I like that. Sometimes these things with these exorcisms, they are very ornate, and obviously they take a lot of prayer, as we all know, and a lot of bullshit. And I like that he just the husband stumbling around. And then just catches a glimpse of his wife and just basically just, what, touches her with the cross. And, like, she's down. But that doesn't get rid of the ghost. What happens is... Oh, but, like, not out or whatever. Yeah, yeah. well, the cross, of course, startles ghosts. We know that. You know, because... Yeah, it, it, well, what happened was um, 2,021 years ago, this fella, Jesus, was born... And uh, 32 years later, he was a carpenter and he was causing trouble. And they, the Jews um, crucified him and <laughs> murdered him with rocks. And, and so they, uh, what ended up happening was... He didn't do it himself. Well, you know, Jew on Jew crime. It happens still today. It's um, an epidemic. <laughs> it's, a, it's a true epidemic. Everywhere. Uh, but uh, this this guy Jesus, he was nailed to two pieces of wood, and so now he was so holy that those two pieces of wood taped together now will hurt a ghost or a demon, and so that's what they use here. And mm. uh, the makes de- sense. <laughs> makes total sense. And um, then he has to transfer the demon into the body of the sister. From the first movie, so he burns a picture. That's how he yeah. does that. Uh, yeah. Martine, interestingly, knows a fuck ton about this stuff. Why I, uh... didn't he just? Why didn't he just burn like some rando? Like, why did it have to be? Do you think he could have just like burnt a picture from a magazine of like Charlie's Theron, and then oh, Charlie's Theron it, would be? It had to be the the person whose blood related to their firstborn. So it had to be her. There's no other option. I did like the objection of By the, the sister. daughter. Yeah, the daughter. Yeah, I like that too. The daughter is kind of the best character in the movie. Yeah. I agree. I agree. And her saying like, oh my God, no, 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 no. We can't do this. Like she's almost willing to let her stepmother just take the fall and whatever rather than do this to somebody else. It was interesting. But, you know, he's not having it. No. Not having it. All right. Um... So what what's the deal here? Ultimately, it, it was the family, like, it's for wealth. We'll find out. It's for wealth, but it. I don't understand, because, like, Katie, they're not wealthy. Like, they're not living in, like, huge houses or anything. They're living know, in Oren Pelly's house. It's the person who originally summoned the demon. Right, but it's for this family, and I would think it would not, it would lead to the family then having wealth. In this movie's logic, to the originator of this, which I believe we find out eventually in three, four, five, or six. Oh, I, Jesus. Uh, you have to, like, watch the whole thing and able to <laughs> make any sense of this? This can make it in four. I think in four they might say. Uh, so it's the originator. Now, they did not have a firstborn son until Hunter. So they are not going to give him up because it's been... 80 years oh, or whatever. Oh, that's so what it is. Born. It's They have to sacrifice the firstborn. Yes. But then they just got real lucky. And, like, all the people that made this deal kept having girls. They never had to deal with this shit. And now it's stuck on these fucks. Pretty much. But I don't even think it goes back that far. I think it's, like, Katie and Christy's grandmother. So it's really just, like, their parents had two kids. And- yeah, because I think you're going to see them make this deal in the next movie. Yes, yeah. you do in one. I seem to recall that in one of the movies. I don't know which one, but um, yeah. Well, it must so, be the next uh, one because it's the only other one I've seen. Oh, and you recall it. Okay, yeah. yeah I, I, I don't know. Maybe it is. Um, All right. Well, what do you give Paranormal Activity to? Well, I'm going to go. Aaron? <laughs> oh. I, I'm, no, I'm actually intrigued. I want to hear Henry's. <laughs> All right, Henry, go ahead. <laughs> Timing, I like that. Because uh, you looked right at me, and I, I, but I figured you. Yeah, this, I know this that good. was the bit. Go ahead. No, it's a good, it was a good bit. Um, it was a fit bit. Um, 
People's I'm gonna choice. go with three. I'm gonna a, a solid three. Yeah, I, I was also gonna do the same thing. Yeah. And I think it's better than the first one. I like I, in my head. I think oh. I had the first one at a four and this one at a three, and now I have them both at a three, and I think this one's better. So I, I kind of agree with you in the sense of that it's like a little bit better than the first one. I do admire the continuity, like bringing in a lot of stuff from the first movie and making it all interconnect. Yeah. Um, where how the other one started as a two, and, or it started as a one and became a two. Um, this one is a, still a solid two for me. Oh, boy. <laughs> a sp- I just, a I solid felt, again, two. You were never in solid. one land. Exactly. So this one was 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 a, a firm piece of two. Um, <laughs> a demon demon knight <laughs> sitting in the yeah, yeah. Aaron, do you wish we covered Final Destination, which was my suggestion? Final Destination. Ooh, ooh. Yeah. No, 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 you know what? This is fun to talk about. I mean, it's always fun to chat with you guys. Like when I saw that you guys did the Strangers the night before, I was thinking, oh, maybe I should call them up and try to get in on that. Oh, I did like man. the Strangers, yeah, yeah. but. Like I said, I loved talking about these things, and I, I enjoyed. I never saw the second one, so I was like, "Oh, maybe I'll enjoy it." This is bored, but it was. I saw it. I, I, and I, it, I it ain't it Children of the Corn, bro. It's definitely above Children of the Corn for actually most of them, except for the third one. Ex- I, I was gonna say the exact same thing. Every <laughs> single one, but Urban Harvest. <laughs> uh, I uh, well, you know, to be fair, Daniel, as you know, I I had. It was between Final Destination, Paranormal, and I, I kind of left it to you. I think no, you I did know. It. I actually ultimately chose this because I came yeah, up with the because I found out they were putting out a new one. Right, right, right. And people love this movie, so I mean, like I, you know, like I said, mileage will vary uh, depending on if you like ghosts or if you like ghosts or if you believe in ghosts or if you like ghost movies. I don't particularly like ghost movies, I and I don't ghouls. believe in ghosts. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> And at least in, like, slasher movies and stuff like that, you have, like, you can appreciate more of the practical effects and stuff like that. And, you know, this is, it's just, it's just very simple, like, virtually in-camera tricks to do this. And a lot of it, you know, sound design played a big role. I, I appreciate the sound designers. So, yeah. like, uh, if anything, maybe that sound designer will get the MVP on this film for me. Oh, I thought the sound design was good, too. And I realized that probably had a lot to do with why I was spooked out the first time I saw these movies. Yeah, yeah, Mm -hmm. for sure. Well, MVP for me is going to be the kid, uh, Ali, Ali, the daughter. Oh, well, if you're going to go with her, I'll get I'll go with the dad, because I thought they were the two standouts in terms of the. I agree. I agree. Aaron. Um, I'm going to go with Martine. As my MVP, I love it. I I I I was bummed when they let her go and happy when she came back. Although, like I said, it it, it <laughs> just the reasons why they fired her and, and all that sort of stuff were kind of uh, you know made me a little upset. But um, yeah. I I think that she did fine. And I looked it up. That actress, she is not in any of the sequels, but she is in Ouija. <laughs> Oh, I'm sorry. My my mistake. I, I could have sworn I read that she was. Okay. She's also in Space Force. Oh, I watched right. every episode of Space Force. Yeah. It was actually and pretty good. And we <laughs> Oh, yeah. Look at that. She's in a lot of shit, actually. She's, like, she's got yeah. a whole career going. Yeah. So uh, good she's, for she's Martin. LVP. Uh, what do you I got? I don't know. LBP, uh, maybe the the, the, the baby. baby. Oh, the baby. the baby. All right. Well, the baby was cute though. <clears throat> I'm going with Christy. I I didn't I didn't think that was she was a particularly compelling performance. I got to tell you the truth. I thought she the was way. better than the first than than. Katie. I didn't because I liked Katie and Mika's chemistry together i thought they had good chemistry and christy's just kind of this no i th- i feel like mika had too much hand in that relationship i feel like uh, katie doesn't make a lot of decisions in that relationship well but i i just didn't i didn't think christy was quite as compelling i thought katie was more believable as like a terrified person who was traumatized by this childhood shit and christy just didn't she didn't she didn't make me believe any much of that so she's my l all right i'll just go with katie again 
<laughs> yeah, so what did you guys think of the the ending by the way like we didn't discuss the ending we'll, we'll make it quick but um I, I i think i was i was starting to to almost venture into three territory and then the ending kind of just like felt so fucking i i i think with both those endings something just really annoyed me with the way that they just like you know just had the person use fucking like jedi powers to throw throw people around but that's what it is like the final form of the ghost in this movie is like super ghost and so Mm -hmm. like at the end of this one it like cuts forward a little bit and it's like right the family from this movie is fine they're living their motherfucking lives but then katie from the first movie gets possessed in the first movie and then shows up at their house and and starts killing everybody Except for the baby, right? Or the so the daughter is not he's there. The Allie's not around. Right, right. So, which was nice. That's nice. We spared her. I hope she comes uh, back yeah. in another movie. And the, the parents both die, and she takes the baby hunted, hunted, or haunted, <laughs> and uh, hunted, and uh, and that's the cliffhanger. Where's she going with this baby? Where are we going, folks? It's like that old run. At Cable. Remember when Cable had the baby? Alright, whatever. No. That was a comic book reference for two people. Alright, um... <laughs> fucking... So, that that's the end of the movie. I like how it ties in, but you're right, it is sort of just... I mean, the movies just always end with, like, alright, we're gonna give them one big spooky thing at the end, and then yeah, it's gonna be over. Right, and then they're gonna keep going. It's a franchise, you know. I still dug it. I like the movie. I'll, I'm sure I'll watch it again. Um... Three stars, you know. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Do an order yet? But uh, for Aaron, since you're you you, this is your episode. I, I assume your order for this would be two one. Would that be right? Yeah. Are you gonna watch any more of them? No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> now, Harris, it, it, these are just they, they. I don't get anything out of these these eh, ghost movies. Like I've tried, I've tried all the conjurings and all that stuff. Like. Oh, you What's don't even like one? those? Those are I like the first two Conjurings. I'm not a, not a big fan of those. That that one uh, with the Bagul, the uh, it's making the kids murder people. That one was good. I liked that one. What? Bagul. It was not the 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 what's what's the other one by James? It was like another James Wan made or produced one that had like a, a ghost. Like someone found a bunch of videos of like. Oh, Is it a James Wan movie? Yeah, it's like an, what, another one. What are the name off? Name Dead off the other Silence, ones. Death Sentence, Aquaman, Malignant. Aquaman. Yeah, right, Aquaman for sure. That's an okay horror movie. It's like another. It's like the Mal- Dazzle like, with Brandon Fraser and, and Elizabeth Hurley? It's like Malfeasance or something like Malignant, that. Malignant, Malignant. Not, not, not Malignant. I, uh, fuck. Malfeasance. Sinister. Sinister. Oh, right, Sinister. Uh, good. That's good. That, that one, like stuff like that, I enjoy. Like, and if, if, like, you know, spooky That's kids doing spooky stuff, like, I, I'm always down for. And that had like more, oh, more stuff involved. Like, it, in like the deaths were like at least something. Like, I, I, I didn't mind the death of the the husband getting his neck snapped in this one. That was like yeah. okay, but yet again, like very bloodless and just very. It, it just. Yeah. I don't know. And then, like I said, it just that, that I, I liked the alternate endings of the first one way better because it's like something like that seemed a little more tangible. It's like, oh, yeah, of course. Like if someone's like, you know, possessed or whatever and like stab someone like that, I could see that happening. That to me is scary is being stabbed to death by someone. Uh, possessed by a I don't ghost, need more plausibility. So than... Give me yeah, a no, big I mean... ghost blow up. <laughs> yeah. Nah, yeah. I'm I... with you on that one, but. I don't know. I just just the whole force power. And oh no, I'm fine with force yeah. powers. Blow up some heads. Do it. Yeah, yeah. or yeah. at least do something like crazy with that. Like have her like like levitate the person and like throw him out a window or something like that. That's like, what she should have done. Had him levitate and then just explode. Yeah. <laughs> now that would have bumped it up to a three star for sure. Yeah. You better believe it. Got to get me on these. I, I give Orin Pelly a note or two. Oh. <laughs> All right, gang. Um, what a great time. Paranormal activity. Fucking Aaron, let me ask you a question. Yeah. If people are interested in you and what you do on a daily basis, uh, where should they look for that? Uh, yeah. Um, so you can always look up my 
website, uh, aaronfarinelli.wordpress.com. That, that if you want to contact me for doing any recordings or anything, I got a full fledged studio out here. I also work at Gatos Trail Recording Studio out here in Joshua Tree. Um, That's where you're living and, these days in Joshua Tree. Yeah, that's cool. I got I yeah, like I used to uh, manage a jazz club in downtown LA, but that didn't survive the the COVID, and so mm. me and my wife were like, "Fuck it, what was that pipe dream we were having about moving out here?" So, um, yeah, it's I'm I'm really liking it out here. I actually have room to build. A, I built a little home studio, um, and been working a lot, um, doing remote recording gigs, and then like I said, I now engineer at a, a an actual like large recordings like larger recording studio than like my bedroom here <laughs> yeah but um uh but also check out my band whale fall we just got back together last weekend and started writing some new stuff we'll awesome. be having some new stuff coming out i've re- did videos for the last few of those very like vhs hit style um right also check out uh, a friend of the podcast, Jason Anthony Harris. I know he's either just released something or he's about to release a new album. And I, I think I'm featured on at least one of the songs. Oh, very nice. cool. Yeah, I think yeah. about nice. to. I follow him on, um, I mean, I, I'm, I'm on his Patreon and he's starting to release songs from it, but not the full record yet. Yeah, mm-hmm. so I... I, I, I I'm pretty sure I'm I'm on I'm on one of them, but regardless of whether I'm on or not, like check out his stuff. His stuff's awesome. Um, and yeah, I think that, that's he surprised me. He surprised me a few months ago. He he released uh, the one thing I ever recorded with him in 2011. He, he got me to record some guitar on a track called Teeth, and he re-released it. That was really cool. I've and heard that, that went song. up on yeah, uh, I was living with you when I did it. He, we recorded down where we live, some somewhere up in the down in the twenties or something. Yeah. yeah, yeah, he's he's always putting out awesome stuff. He he's going to be on the show next week, Jason Anthony Harris. And I had actually quickly wanted to mention you. He had asked me a funny question last night, right before I was watching two, and he said, <laughs> "How many of these fucking things do I have to watch before I get to three and four? Do I is it necessary to watch? You know what I oh. said? Well." Scratch one, you know, which I can see that he did on Letterboxd and clearly liked it. Uh, and I told him you can skip two. Yeah, I saw, I saw, by the way, I saw I gave it a three and a half on Letterboxd. And Jason, next week on the show, I won't be accepting those half grades. I just want you to know that. Right? <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, but, you know, it's funny because then after I watch two and after our discussion, it kind of becomes increasingly clear to me that going straight into three and four after one won't be that helpful i think you he probably want to watch two yeah yeah and if you like the first one that much hopefully maybe he'll yeah maybe hey he'll three and a half is definitely higher than aaron yeah uh, <laughs> and you and yeah true